2023 is over. So I thought it would be cool to look back at some of the insane things we've done this year. We'll include all of the best moments, some second channel funny moments, <laughs> and a tour of my hardcore world. So without further ado, grab your popcorn, sit back, and enjoy this full Minecraft movie. So the first video I want to look back on is the video I made for hitting 1 million subscribers. Yeah, building this thing was pretty challenging. Passing 1 million subscribers means YouTube are going to send me a shiny gold award. The only problem is, it can sometimes take months to arrive, and I definitely can't wait that long. So instead, I had the genius idea of building a massive 1 million wow. subscriber gold award in my heart. Hardcore will, meaning we need a crazy amount of gold. And we're starting with none. But thankfully, we were about to finish one of the most overpowered gold farms in the world. It's so powerful that it gives us over 1,000 gold blocks per hour. The only catch is we have a lot of items to collect. So I guess let's start with the easier blocks like four carpet. And then we'll move on to the harder blocks later. All right, now I'm probably just going to go through my sorting system and tick off all the rest of the easy blocks. Now they're going to get a lot harder. The next one is 4,000 building blocks. And in my head, this farm is made out of stone, so we're going to use this machine. All right, that is the 4,000 stone we're going to need. Next up, we need 18 turtle eggs. And I think I know just where to get them. Oh my god, there's so many turtles. All right, now if I hold this in my hand... They should follow me. Nice. Come into the turtle hole. You know you want to. Yes. Turtle number two. Perfect. Okay, now that we've got six turtles in the hole, it's time for a turtle breeding montage. Give me a turtle egg. Oh, he's making an egg. Yes. I just hit an egg. Yes. There's four more eggs. Why have these guys not made any eggs? Come on, guys. I need more eggs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Leave my turtles alone. They're trying to steal the eggs. More eggs. Only seven more eggs to go. Oh my god, they're going insane. Yes, I heard an egg. Two more eggs. Come on, you can do it. All right, we only need two more eggs. Yes. Oh my god, the last two turtle eggs. Can I have them? Yes. I'll leave you with one egg. And for our last material, the only thing we need is 10,000 of these blocks. Wait, that's going to take ages. Well, there's four. Now, after searching around online, I realized there's not really any shortcuts when it comes to getting this quantity of magma blocks. So I just had to jump into the nether and get grinding. Hours and hours went by, but eventually we had our 10,000 magma blocks. So now we have absolutely everything we're going to need to build this farm. But we can't just build it anywhere. It needs to be built on the nether roof above a nether wasteland biome. But the thing is, it can't be close to any of my portals because that will literally break the farm. So now let's try and find a wasteland biome. Oh, all right, this looks like a decent place. I don't see any of my portals around here. Now we just need to get onto the roof. Nice. So first we need like a nether portal cube. Now we need to build slightly taller nether portals going from here all the way up to there. And now we build the last portal, connect them up and put slabs on it so no pigmen can spawn on here. Now it's turtle egg time. So I think we do something like this and we place glass on here, then a turtle egg on top. Now time to repeat that 16 more times. Okay, now we need to surround the eggs with trap doors so that the pigmen can't destroy the eggs. And now we get to open them, so I'm going to fall all the way down there. And of course, we need to do that on the rest of the sides. Okay, next we need to build the actual spawning platforms. So seven out and five on each side. Then we do this on every side. And now we connect these up with diagonal lines. And that's the first shulker placed. We've got a long way to go. And that is shulker box number two. We're not even halfway and my finger is starting to hurt. I'm sure it'll be fine. There's shulker box number three. And shulker number four. Shulker number five. 
And with the last layer complete, it's time to move on to the glass bit. So, whilst I was building the layers, these guys had the amazing idea of dyeing the glass. And we're gonna go with orange glass to fit the general aesthetic. Alright, now that we've got that, we can move on to the next stage of the build, which is actually linking the portal to the overworld. But if we get this wrong, it will break the entire farm. This part of the build took me absolutely ages, and it probably didn't help that I built some of it facing the wrong way. But after a few hours... Okay, I think we're ready. Let's turn this this on head up here and now i just turn the auto clicker on and hopefully in 10 hours we should have all the gold we need Okay, it's been 10 hours and we now have over a million gold nuggets and also tens of thousands of gold ingots. All right, I finished crafting and we now have just over 10 full shulker boxes of gold blocks, which is nearly 17,000 blocks of gold. So I think it's fair to say that phase one is complete and it's time to move on to phase two, which is planning the build. We need to find a good location for the build and work out the size and proportions of the build. It needs to be in a place where you can clearly see how big it is. And yes, I renamed a bunch of TNT to Explosive Shovel. And after cleaning up the area, I got rid of some of the ugly grass and planted a bunch of saplings for scale. And just like that, we have our location. Now we need to work out how big this thing is actually going to be. But before we do that, it's important we found out the proportions of the YouTube Gold Award. So at first, I tried messaging YouTube support, but they weren't very helpful. So I spoke to SB on Discord and asked him if he wouldn't mind sharing the dimensions of his YouTube Gold Award. And thank Thankfully, only a few minutes later, he responded with the exact centimeter proportions. SB737 sending me the gold award dimensions really helped me in this video. But now, thanks to you guys, I know exactly how big the gold award is. But anyways, here's me placing 26,000 blocks in a couple of minutes. This is gonna take a while. First block down, over 20,000 more to go. And my finger is still kind of hurting from building that farm. This is not gonna do it any good. 130. 131, 132. Oh, my forearm is actually really hurting. This is painful. Right, I only have to do this for about two more hours. All right, yeah, no, I can't do this. I swear my forearm still hasn't recovered, but after setting up the auto clicker to help me build, I was back to making progress. Okay, I'm literally not touching my mouse and this is working perfectly. It's a tiny bit slower, but at least my forearms can rest easy. Now let's make some progress. All right, it's been about an hour, and as you can see, we've made a lot of progress. But this now presents a new problem, because on the award, there's this middle reflective part that's different to everywhere else. And in my opinion, black glass seemed to look the best. And I've used some genius math to work out that we need 3,456 black glass, meaning a lot of these guys are about to die. All right, that's all the black dye we're gonna need. And for the glass, we can use our sand duper. And now our spaceship will generate us all the sand we need. Now that we've got the sand, and head over to our asteroid and get all the glass we need. And now that we've got our glass, we'll convert it into black stained glass. So now let's get back to building. Okay, and now all we need to do is use our genius calculations to add the play button to there. And then the build will be complete. My 1 million gold award is pretty rare, but not as rare as some of the items in this next video. This video taught me a lot about items. I didn't even know some of these items existed, especially the screaming goat horns. The dragon egg is Minecraft's rarest item, or is it? You see, there are actually way more rare items, and some that you didn't even know existed. So I'm gonna collect them all, starting with the hardest to get mob head in the game, the piglin head. It's so rare that I haven't even seen a single YouTuber with it. To get a piglin head, you need to take a supercharged creeper into the nether and blow up a piglin. But to even get a supercharged creeper, we need a channeling trident. So a lot of these guys are about to die. All right, our first trident guy, and of course, we didn't get it. Another trident guy? Come on. No. Yeah, so I've just found out there's only an 8.5% chance of them actually dropping a trident. That's not very good. How is there not a trident guy here? 
Yes! Oh my god! A trident! So now we enchant this trident with channeling. Oh, well, that was easy. And I guess we should also get mending. All right, and now we wait for a thunderstorm. Hopefully this won't take too long. All right, come on. Yes, out of the way, zombie. Come on. All right, complete the portal. Light it. No. Oh my god, no. Come on. No, no, no. And the thunderstorm stopped. Great. Oh, that's so much time wasted. And every second counts because in 24 hours, I'm giving a presentation to my friends explaining why the dragon egg is not the rarest item in the game. And I need all the proof I can get. I quickly found a rabbit foot, a poisonous potato, tall grass, and a large fern, which were all surprisingly easy to find. So with these first items collected, I think it's only right that we store them on a presentation board. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up to the top with the items items getting rarer and rarer. So next up is a pottery shard from a trail ruin. And I've actually never seen one, which leads me to believe they are quite rare. Ooh, is that one? That's got to be one. Yes, to find pottery shards, we need suspicious gravel or suspicious sand. Yes, we got a pottery shard, a heartbreak pottery shard. Let's just see what else we can get from here. Ooh, is that an armor trim? Why don't we collect all 16 of them? So this is the host armor trim, which is our first one out of 16 to collect. All right, so with these four armor trims, we now have about half of all the armor trims in the game. So after searching shipwrecks, pyramids, nether fortresses, and trail ruins for a while, I managed to find some more rare items, like suspicious stew, diamond horse armor, a goat horn, and a bottle of enchanting. I was making some pretty good progress. But two hours of our 24 hours are now gone, and we're gonna need much rarer items if we're gonna convince my friends that the dragon egg is not the rarest item in the game. So I think we'll leave the harder armor trims for later. And instead, let's follow this buried treasure map to find some more rare items. All right, it looks like it's this way. Okay, so it should be somewhere around here. There we go. And we have the Heart of the Sea, which is actually quite a rare item. But to get an even rarer item, we need another one. So we need another map. Yes, and it should be right around here. There we go. Yoink. All right, and we want to use this with some Nautilus shells to craft a conduit. The only problem is we need eight of these shells and we've only got three. I quickly built a drowned farm, which would make this task a lot easier. All right, as you can see, the drowned farm is now working. Let's see how long it takes us to get to eight Nautilus shells. All right, there's three more and... Another three. So we finally have enough to craft up our conduit. There we go. So let's add these items. And keeping with the theme of rare ocean items, the next one is going to be a bucket of puffer fish. The only problem is they are very rare. Oh, puffer fish, where are you? Excuse me, guys. Have you seen a puffer fish? There's so many fish, just not the ones I want. Wait. Is that one? No, it's a, it's a frog. Yeah. Ah, okay. They're only found in lukewarm oceans. This seems like the right biome. There's gotta be one around here somewhere. Wait, yes. Oh my God. We found a puffer fish. Let's go. Ow. All right. And that is the puffer fish in a bucket added. I have a feeling that's not going to be the rarest mob in a bucket that we get. But for now, let's try and get the rest of the goat horns. Right now, we have three out of a possible eight. But I'm pretty sure there's only one more that we can get from the outpost. All right, can we get really lucky? Ooh, that's a really good chest. Do we have this one? Yes, we do. Ooh, a snowy outpost. Does that mean that there's a goat horn in here? No. Oh, we just keep getting duplicates. So I decided to do some research. And it turns out there's two types of goat horns. Regular goat horns horns, which are the ones found in outposts. Meaning there's only one goat horn from the outpost that we need, and that is the field goat horn. All right, come on. No, not even a single goat horn. No, no, no. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Finally, that means we have four out of the eight goat horns, but the other ones we have to get from screaming goats. Now, if you didn't know, there's a 2% chance for a goat to be a screaming goat, which by definition makes these four horns a lot rarer than the other ones. So our first step is to actually find a screaming goat. And for this, we're just gonna hit a bunch of goats. Oh, I thought this was a goat. Is this a screaming goat? That is a screaming goat. <laughs> All right, so in order to get the four screaming goat horns, we need to turn this screaming goat into lots of screaming goats. So for now, this guy can stay here. Then if we grab this regular goat, wait, I think this one is a screaming goat. Ah. 
Oh my god, it is. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Well, 2%. So we don't need this guy. Okay, let's just test these. Hopefully, the baby is a screaming goat. Ah. Yes! Oh my god, it's a screaming goat. Nice. Now we need to build a farm for these guys so we can get their really rare goat horn. Oh my god, he lost his horn. Yes! <laughs> Ow. But we got the fifth goat horn. Whoa, that's kind of weird. <laughs> oh yes! The second horn. Yes, that's six out of the eight horns. And so to get the last two, we should probably keep breeding up these goats. Because the more screaming goats we have, the more chance we've got of getting these horns. <laughs> Wait, what? How did you escape? Yeah, we should probably add a roof on it. Oh, the goats are actually painful. All right, now they are nice and secure. Any new horns? Oh, yes, the seventh horn. Yes, oh my God, the eighth horn. And we get two in a row, great. So that is all eight horns collected in hardcore Minecraft. So far, we've collected a lot of rare items and there's still a lot more to collect, including the rarest block in Minecraft, the Deep Slay Emerald Ore block. It's so rare that people have spent tens of hours mining, looking for this block and still haven't found it. Yeah, that's gonna make this 24 hour challenge really hard. But luckily for us, I've already found this block. So I'm just gonna steal it from here. Some of you might be slightly disappointed with that, but we are running out of time. And to make up for it, I'm also gonna collect another extremely rare block, pink wool from a naturally spawning pink sheep. Now there's only a 0.164% chance of a pink sheep actually spawning. So we're gonna have to do a lot of searching. Wait a second. At the end of my 1000 sniffer video, I killed a pink sheep and it dropped pink wool. I'm pretty sure I put it in a shulker box. All right, come on, please. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> Pink wool. Oh, that saved us so much time. So now let's try and collect the rest of the armor trims. I quickly managed to find the Tide armor trim from an Elder Guardian, the Snout trim from a Bastion, the Spire trim from an End City, the Eye trim from a Stronghold, the Wild trim from Jungle Temples, and even a Vex trim from a Woodland Mansion. So now if we add these trims, we only have two armor trims left and they are the most rare and the most dangerous because you have to find them in ancient cities. Okay, we need to be very careful, but we need to search all the chests. Oh, why is it so scary? Oh, yes, the ward armor trim. There was only a 5% chance of that. Now the only armor trim left is the silent armor trim. It's the rarest one in the game and there is about a 1% chance of it spawning. Oh, this is going to be annoying. <laughs> I really hope we can just get really lucky. We've got another chest. Uh-oh. Nope. Wooden. Oh, this is scary. I'm gonna fly. No, there's another one. Oh my god. Yeah, let's come back for the silence trim later. But now we can add the ward armor trim, a bottle of enchanting, and an enchanted golden apple. So to fill up some more of these spaces, how about we collect every music disc? I had the idea to build this contraption that would make getting music discs a lot easier. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God, that is so many discs. All right, so we can add all these creeper music discs. And we can also add this one, which we got from the trail ruins earlier. Then when we went in the ancient city, we also got some disc fragments, which we can use to get this music disc. Nice. And finally, we need the pig step music disc. Here we go. That is all of the 16 music discs. After the discs, I found some dragon's breath, a lingering potion, and both leather and iron horse armor, which meant we only had the golden horse armor left. I feel like the best place to find this is gonna be inside a nether fortress. Come on. Oh my god, first try. Let's go, that is all the horse armor. But whilst we're here, why don't we make a start on the mob heads? There is a 2.5% chance of these guys dropping their skull. But because we got loot in three, it should be about 8.5%. All right, here we go. Come on, get lucky. Why is my luck so bad? Oh my god. Yes, finally. That is the first mob head collected. The second mob head is gonna be a dragon head, which should be easy enough. All we need to do is find an end ship. Here we are. Just gonna... Nice. Yeah, the dragon head was just a little bit easier. But now we've got a bit of a problem because you need thunder and lightning to get the rest of the mob heads. And uh, yeah, as you can see... There is no thunder and lightning. So let's leave some space for them and focus on the wither items. But this time to get the wither heads, we're gonna use this farm. Yeah, I don't fancy wasting another hour. There we go. 
Yeah, that's much faster. <laughs> All right, so with these withers, there is three rare items that we need to get. The first of which is, of course, a nether star. All right, let's go in for some hits. Let's go. The nether star. Ooh and diamonds. The second rare item also requires a nether star. So this guy is about to die. Then we can use this nether star to craft ourselves up a beacon. And finally, for the last rare wither item, we want to get a wither rose. So for this, that wither needs to kill an innocent animal. Yes, there it is. Now we should probably kill that guy before he destroys our entire world. Come back. Oh, it's time to go in with the sword. Okay, now we have to kill him. It's us or him. Nice, he's dead. Okay, so that is the wither items added to our presentation wall. And now it's been ages since our last thunderstorm. So I'm thinking we should take our trident with us so that we're ready to get the rest of the mob heads. But for now, let's get the rare turtle items. I built the turtle enclosure where I managed to get some scoot. But whilst I was getting more scoot to acquire the next item, this happened. Wait, is this a thunderstorm? How can I test it? Oh my god, it is. Creepers. We need creepers. Okay, supercharged creeper. No, 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 no. Skeleton, come here. All right, and blow up. No! The skeleton killed it. All right, supercharged. Nice, nice, nice. Come over here, skeleton. Come on, get in the hole, get in the hole. No! There's two here. All right, if we can get them here. And now blow up, blow up. Yes! Did we get a mob head? No, they blew each other up. Zombie, get in the hole. There's another one there. Yes, yes, there's a zombie head. Where's the other creeper? There's one there. Nice, we got him. Come on, skeleton. Yes, we got it. The last one we need is a creeper itself. We need to somehow separate these. Yes, there we go, a creeper head. And that is all the mob heads we can get with lightning, apart from the piglin head. But we're going to have to leave that one to the end. So whilst we're waiting for these guys, why don't we try and get all the banner patterns? All right, the first banner pattern we're going to make is the flower banner pattern, and we can make that like that. Then we can use one of our wither skulls to make the skull charge banner pattern. And sadly, we have to use an enchanted golden apple to make the thing banner pattern, which if you didn't know, is actually the Mojang wow. logo. And then the final banner pattern is the creeper face banner pattern. Wait a second, we've only got one creeper face. We should have a creeper face. Yes, let's go. There we go. That is all the banner patterns. And as you might have noticed, we have ran out of space. So we now have one more row reserved for only the rarest of items. And speaking of rare items, it's finally time to attempt to get one of the rarest items in the game, a bucket filled with a blue axolotl. And you may already know there is only a one in 1,200 chance of getting a blue axolotl. This is the item that could make or break this challenge. So it's safe to say I'm very nervous. Ow. So the first step is to find two axolotls to start the breeding process. I quickly set up a breeding farm for axolotls, hoping I'd get lucky before my time to complete this challenge ran out. Yeah, I never want to see another axolotl. This process literally took me hours and I still remember the movies I was watching. But to be fair, the feeling when I finally saw the blue axolotl was amazing. And whilst you watch me get it, I'm just going to kill these axolotls. We've made some really good progress. Still no sign of the blue axolotl yet though. But we do now have 18 scoots, meaning we can craft the turtle helmet. Oh yeah, looks so cool. And then if we get another one of them, we can brew up the rarest potion in the game. And to make it even more rare, let's turn it into a potion of lingering. Why would anyone actually ever get this? So with these three added to the presentation wall, let's get back to the axolotl. Come on, we've now only got four hours left of our 24 hours. We really need this blue axolotl. Surely we've got to get one soon. I think I just saw one. Maybe if we look from up here. I'm not sure if it was the water or not. Or just like me hallucinating from breeding axolotls for so long. Come on. Maybe if we take some of the regular ones out, we might be able to find the blue one. Wait. Wait. There it is. It's a baby one. Stay with it. It's so annoying. Come back. Come back, please, please. Just get in the bucket. Yes, oh my God, I think I got it. Let's go, we have the blue axolotl. 
<laughs> it's so cool. Oh, finally. But there is only two hours left of our 24 hours. This is gonna be hard. And believe it or not, this little guy is not the rarest item you can get in a bucket. Because the chances of getting this exact tropical fish are 1 in 3,584. Wow. Yoink. Because that's how many different variations of tropical fish there are in Minecraft. And so with these items collected, that only leaves us two more items to go. The first of which is the rarest armor trim in the game, the Silence Armor Trim. Which, if you remember, only has a 1% chance of spawning. So it's time to search a lot of ancient cities. Yes! Oh my god! The Silence Armor Trim! A 1% chance. And there's a warden. No. Anyways, with this last armor trim added, that leaves only one more rare item. The piglin head. Firstly, we're going to need a name tag. We need to make sure to name it something cool. And we're going to need one of these. Now we need to trap one of these guys. Come on. Yes. Ow. And now we set this side up. Perfect. All we have to do is wait for a thunderstorm. Wait, it's finally thundering. Um, we need a creeper. Come on. Right, this way, creeper. Get in the boat. Nice. Now we can just name tag this guy quickly. No, don't blow up. Make sure he's nice and trapped in there. We need to block this off and somehow get this creeper to go into the portal. Yes, he went through the portal. Okay, and now to get the head, we need to break the boat. Let's make sure we got our chest plate on. Let's use a golden apple and let's do this. The supercharged creeper's right there. We break the boat. I just need to break this boat. Okay. All right. Blow up. Wait, the creeper went back through. No. Yes. Oh my God. We got it anyway. <laughs> Everything went wrong, but we got it. Let's go. Oh my God. The piglet head. So with the last item complete, it's finally time for the presentation. All right, welcome to my presentation. You think the dragon egg is the rarest item in the game, right? Well, obviously. Well, I'm here to change your mind on that because I've spent the last 24 hours collecting the real rarest items in the game. Wait, how did you even get them? Oh my god! What the hell? I didn't even know you could get a rabbit. Now let's go from my most viewed episode of the year to my least viewed. This is AI. Wait, no, this is actually AI. And it takes whatever you write. For example, a purple rhino riding a rocket and turns it into a beautiful piece of art. So now we're going to use this AI to build something beautiful in Minecraft. The first step is to get some suggestions of what to build from you guys. So I've tweeted out asking for your favorite colors, animals, and places. And then I used a random wheel to pick a combination of the three. And this is what we came up with. A blue tiger on Tatooine, which is the planet from Star Wars. This is going to look really cool. Let's see. <laughs> this one looks really cool. If we click on it, we can get variations of this. Ooh. All right, nice. So we're going to go with this blue tiger. So now it's time for step three. This is where we're going to use a Minecraft pixel art generator to turn this image into something that can be built in Minecraft. So if we just click generate, we have the plan, but most importantly, a list of every block we're going to need. To make this build actually look good, we needed loads of different blocks and collecting them all took absolutely ages. We need 1,358 blocks of gold. Oh, uh, why did someone have to suggest a planet that's made of sand. Anyways, let's start off with the easy blocks and work our way up to the harder ones. Getting most of these blocks was a pretty easy task, apart from lapis. I had to give up on that one for now. But some of these blocks proved to be a bit more of a challenge. Next up, it's time to acquire some ice. And I don't mean the kind of ice that rappers wear. I'm talking about packed ice, normal ice, and blue ice which I have just remembered is made out of nine packed ice. I'm about to destroy a lot of ice spikes. All that destruction and we still have less than half of the amount of blue ice we need. We need to go bigger. And bang, that is all the blue ice. But we're not done role-playing climate change just yet. We need 158 powdered snow and yeah. So we need 158 buckets. Looks like a lot of these guys are gonna have to die. Oh no, perfect. 
Let's go. Oh, wait. Oh my god, we have to store 158 of these. We can use these spare six shulker boxes to store the snow, but I don't want to have to carry them around with us, so a normal person might say, put them in an ender chest. However, I am not a normal person. There's got to be one around here somewhere. Oh, hi, Dream. That is the wrong animal. <laughs> Let's go! And how do I... Wait, what? You don't even need to craft anything. You just need a chest. Oh my god. And just like that, we have somewhere to store all of our snow. This is so much better than using an ender chest. The nether blocks were a breeze to collect, apart from the last one, which was a blast to find, <laughs> if you get what I mean. No. Now for the final nether block, and it's gonna require some TNT. Do I have any? Nice. Okay, now we just place down some TNT. Wait, is that gonna light that? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So we're looking for four ancient debris. Can we get it from this? There's one. Why do we even need ancient debris to build a blue tiger? Eh, whatever the AI wants. Ooh. Oh my god, there's two. Yes, just one more to go. And that's all the nether blocks complete. Now it's about time we start dealing with one of our biggest problems. The 1,358 blocks of gold we need for this build. Luckily, I have one of the most OP gold farms in the world. So all I need to do is click this. <laughs> All right, I don't know if the farm was working properly, but let's see how much gold we got anyway. And that's it. We have just over 10% of what we need. Oh my God. I think we'll come back to that later. Most of these blocks weren't difficult to get, but just required a lot of mining in different biomes. And all of that traveling had damaged my elytra. Okay, so I've been using the piglin farm to repair my elytra, and it's actually given me an idea about our next block. You see, it's crying obsidian. So if we eat into some of our gold supply, we should be able to trade with these guys for crying obsidian. The only problem is it's based all on luck and we're not getting very lucky we need to find some way of increasing our odds and the best way to do this is gonna be getting multiple pigs come on mr piglin they are such gold diggers Ooh, yes more gold diggers let's go yes we have six piglins in the hole And that's the crying obsidian done. And finally, the one I've been dreading, the 1,000 gold blocks we're gonna need for this build. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sit here all night. And by the morning, we had all the gold we needed. So all of the blocks have finally been collected. Now it's time to construct the AI's amazing build. But where should we put such a magnificent piece of art? This looks like a good spot. And that way, Dream will always be looking at the AI's build. So first, we'll grab some dirt. And we'll use this to build the 100 long area we need for the build. And in the process, I had to destroy this hill. The brain power needed to precisely place 10,000 blocks was insane. And I definitely underestimated that. I made so many different mistakes and it nearly led to me giving up on the video entirely. Okay, it's time to start building because we've only got 10 hours to get this done and we need to place 10,000 blocks. Meaning we need to place one block every 3.5 seconds for the next 10 hours. Oh my God, this is gonna be hard. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna build it up in rows. And luckily this pixel generator allows you to click here and it tells you all the blocks you need for each row so with time ticking down it's time to start the first row five gold and back to streamline four gold now we're onto the random blocks at the end for some reason endstone diamond emerald is that slime streamline purple concrete powder and finish it off with blue concrete powder okay that's the first row done there's gotta be a faster way of doing this so after doing some thinking i realized the next 10 or so layers are mainly made out of stream lights and gold blocks so if i focus on doing the gold blocks first and then just fill in the gaps with stream lights that will probably be so much faster so now i've got all the gold blocks in my inventory and i know exactly what to do at first this method was going well it was easy and i was making good progress but then i started making mistakes getting confused about which blocks go where and completely messing up connecting the different branches but eventually i got all the gold placed and from then on filling in the gaps with shroom lights was very easy hmm, to be honest i can't really see how this is gonna look good but i guess we've just got to trust the process and get grinding oh and believe it or not that has taken us two and a half hours already so time is definitely ticking down at the moment and this blue represents the first part of the blue tiger i think i've got an idea to speed it up a bit there is a couple large areas made out of only endstone 
So if we fill them bits in now, it should save us a bunch of time later. Hopefully I don't mess this up. All right, that should help, but we've still got so much to do and not very much time. So it's time to start making some serious progress. Leave me alone. I'm just trying to build. Oh, uh, why does the blue tiger bit have to be so complicated? I dream. I feel like once we finish the tiger part, it's going to be so much easier because this part is so complicated. It's finally time for this next bit. We need some powdered snow. So if we come over here, we can find our trusty donkey and he has all the powdered snow for us. Perfect. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. How am I going to build the next layers? <laughs> That's a problem for future lockdown life. All right, yeah, future lockdown life is having problems now. The powdered snow ended up slowing us down quite a bit, but I didn't let that get me down because we had nearly finished the blue tiger's head. There we go. That's the tiger's head complete. But before I show you, let's finish the sky. And after 12 hours of building, the masterpiece is finally finished. AI might be the destruction of the human race, but it can definitely make some awesome art. The reason I don't think this video did very well is because the idea itself is just a bit random. I mean, what is that? A blue cat in a desert for some reason. I should have chosen something a bit more random and funny like Dream's face. Little did I know this building process would be one of the most challenging things I do all year. That video was quite demoralizing, so to make up for it, here's one of the most fun videos I've ever made. I hate Minecraft biomes because they are extremely boring and when I see them, I feel like I'm reading a newspaper. And so with 16 different colors in Minecraft, I'm going to transform this circle into a biome made out of every single color so that I'll never be bored again. And the first step to doing that is splitting this circle into 16 equal slices. So first we can easily split it into four sections. Nice, now we can split these sections in half so that we have eight equal sections. We now need to split each one of these segments in half. This is going to be much harder, but let's try and give it a go. All right, attempt number one. And oh my god, <laughs> that is so bad. But thankfully, after spending many hours messing around in the creative world, we now had a circle split into 16 equal segments. And the first biome we're building is going to be the orange biome. So every block inside it must be orange. We'll grab a bunch of this red sand, which is orange for some reason. And to be fair, lava is also kind of orange, so we can use that in our biome. All right, so now let's get building. Bruh. Ah. There we go, about a thousand dirt blocks later, and we can finally place our sand. Now I'm going to use some of our acacia wood to make some kind of dead orange trees. Okay, that's not terrible, but we can make it better. Maybe if we add some acacia fences to make it look a bit more detailed, like little smaller branches. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now we're going to use some red sandstone and some orange terracotta to make little mounds of rock. Then we'll also scatter some pumpkins around the place. And finally, to finish the orange biome off, I want to make some lava pits. And that is the orange biome complete. That took a lot longer than I thought, which is very bad because in seven days, I've invited my friends to play hide and seek in my finished build. And I bet them $500 each that they won't be able to find me. If the map isn't built in seven days, I'll have to play on a map that I'm not prepared for. So unless I want to lose $1,000, I need to finish building this fast. The green biome was next and it didn't take me long at all, but we might get a really hard one next because I've been using this random wheel generator to choose the colors. And so let's see what we get for the next color. Purple. This is going to be a bit of a harder one, but I do have a few ideas. And the first of which is purple blocks. And now actually we could probably use some of these. And now the next purple block we're going to need is of course amethyst. 
Oh, this stuff always sounds so good. Oh, this could actually be useful. When I'm playing hide and seek later, I can listen out for amethyst blocks to know when the seekers are around me. So now this is pretty much all the purple blocks we can use. And I'm thinking most of this is going to be amethyst. All right, it looks decent, but I don't really know what else to do with this purple biome. There's really not that many blocks we can use for it. And that's made harder by the fact I'm following a rule where I can't use colored blocks like concrete or wool. However, I think to make sure this completed build looks as cool as possible, I'm going to have to break my own rules. So I can now use colored blocks like wool and concrete and use small bits of different colors to make the biomes better. This would definitely make them a lot less boring. For example, I'm going to build a giant purple octopus. And this idea was yoinked from Mosey, by the way, so shout out to him. And that was the purple biome complete. But we don't have time to admire it because we've only got five and a half days until the hide and seek competition. So next up, I built the lime biome. And for this one, I built a huge trampoline park using slime blocks and a floating emerald island, which you could access using an elevator. Then came the pink biome, which revolved around this huge cherry blossom tree, which I think looked pretty cool. And with that done, that is the pink biome complete. We've only done five out of the 16 biomes, but in my opinion, the builds are already starting to look really cool. Imagine what it's going to look like at the end. But if we're ever going to get there, we need to make some more progress. And I am drowning. What's it going to be? White. So we're going to need a lot of snow. All right. And now that this landscape is completely ruined, we're also going to need quite a lot of powdered snow. This stuff is going to be extremely important. And then for no reason apart from it sounds nice when I break it, I'm going to collect a bunch of bone blocks. Oh, so satisfying. All right, first things first, we need to kill that fish and make this entire area snow. All right, there's the first objective done. I think we should make this white biome all about hiding. And that's where the powdered snow comes in. You see, one cool thing about powdered snow is when you stand on it, you fall through it. And this has given me a very clever idea. We could have secret tunnels going underneath the snow and they'd be basically invisible to the seekers. So to make this work, all we need to do is place some dirt around the powdered snow, drain the water from inside it, and then place some ladders. So if we need to, we can always escape. Oh wait, you, you can't escape. I literally can't jump out. And because we won't be able to break blocks in the hide and seek, we're going to need to find another solution. We could place a bunch of random boats all across this biome like this, and the seekers won't have any idea why they're there. But if we position them in the right spot, we can use them to escape. Wow. All right, we now have a tunnel connecting all three of these holes. This is going to be so good. But these boats do look a bit weird here on their own. Thankfully, however, I've got an idea to fix that. So as you can see, the bone blocks have been put to good use and I have built a majestic igloo. This white biome could save us $1,000. But let's try and make the hiding spots in the next biome even better. And that biome is... The cyan biome. All right, cyan is a bit of a weird one, but luckily the nether has something that will help us. As you can see, this warped biome is pretty much all cyan. We're also going to need a bunch of rails because the idea for the cyan biome is to build a massive roller coaster. We're going to use warped nylium as the base for the build. So I guess we'll have the start of the roller coaster about here and we'll have it climb up like this at the start. A little while later, and I had finally finished the roller coaster as well as the rest rest of the biome. And now all that's left to do is test out this roller coaster. All right, please work. Come on. All right, it goes up. Nice. And we fall down. Perfect. Yes. And now across and down this bit. Oh, this is sick. Let's go. Wait, I think someone's calling me on Discord. It was my brother Gamers who was going to be one of the seekers in the competition. All right, so this is the build so far. Oh my god, that's quite big actually. Five minutes you'll have to find me. Yeah, there's no way you're hiding for five minutes. I think I will. <laughs> you're underestimating me. No, there's no way there's enough hiding spaces. We're definitely going to find you. I'm still pretty confident, but I think Gamers was right about there not being enough hiding spaces. So in this biome, we're going to have to have much more places to hide light blue. So my idea for this biome is to make a massive blue ice mountain, but with lots of little places to hide. So this is all packed ice. And if we get a crafting table, we can turn this into blue ice. And because they're both light blue, we probably want to use both kinds of ices. 
And whilst I was busy collecting the ice, I realized we only had three days left until the hide and seek competition. I was really loving how this build was turning out with all the different colors. And the fact I was gonna use it to play hide and seek at the end made it even better. Okay, there's the base. Now let's build the massive mountain. There's gotta be a lot of spaces to hide in here. Otherwise, we are gonna be screwed. Okay, there's the loose structure of the mountain. Now we just fill it in. This is kind of the same thing as the cherry blossom tree where you just spam loads of blocks. All right, come on, please let this look good. Okay, that actually looks pretty good, but we can use some blue eyes to make the details look a bit better. And now finally, of course, it's time to do some hiding spots. And of course, when I'm hiding, I'll only be visible by my chest plate, which I'll be changing the color of depending on which biome I'm hiding it. So if we make a little small hole like this and then make it hideable like that, we could literally crawl in here like this and they'd barely be able to see us. So if we have a few more of these hidey holes around the mountain, I might be able to keep my $1,000. Ow. Do you mind? And so with lots of spaces to hide, that is the light blue biome complete. I was now halfway there to complete the build. And next up was the dark blue biome, which was gonna be ocean themed. This one really didn't take me long at all. So with the trident added and some magma blocks that would enable me to hide underwater, the blue biome was complete. Anyways, that gave me the energy to quickly complete four of the remaining biomes. First up, I did the light gray biome using stone, cobblestone, and andesite to create a huge mountain. It was complete with secret tunnels and hiding spots that will be very useful later. Next, I did the magenta biome. This was a hard one as blocks tend to be either purple or pink, but I decided to use concrete and crimson netherwood to build this alien looking landscape. It's complete with a little wooden house that has some secrets of its own. The black biome was next and I based this build around the void. Using a bunch of different black blocks, it will be incredibly hard for a seeker to spot me if I'm wearing a black leather chest plate. And finally, the last biome I did was the red biome. Using mangrove wood and some leftover red nether bricks, I built a futuristic red skyscraper with lots of floors. This would hopefully ensure I had lots of places to hide as I really don't fancy losing $1,000. Speaking of which, there's only one day left until the hide and seek competition and we've got three biomes left to build. We need to hurry up. So the next biome is the yellow biome. So for this biome, I think we should probably make use of some of our gold. There's an entire shulker full of gold and we might as well also get a couple of beehives. Ooh, there's one. Yoink. We'll get some hay bales. I was thinking that we should use sand as the base, but I think it looks a bit too unsaturated. We want something really yellow like concrete powder. This stuff is just like the yellow version of red sand. Now I'm going to use gold blocks that will lead to the big build of this biome. Speaking of which, the build for this biome is going to be a giant rubber duck. And of course, inside it will be an amazing hiding place. The only problem is I've never built a rubber duck before, so let's see how this looks. I... I don't think it's too bad. <laughs> it's heads a bit, I don't know, square. Other than that, I think the duck's all right. Maybe we'll just do this, something like that. Yeah, that looks like a duck. <laughs> okay, now for the important bit. This duck is going to have a secret entrance. Sticky piston here and some concrete on this. And then we power both of these blocks. It pushes the piston and the duck looks completely normal. Well, um, as normal as it can look. Okay, now when we press this, this should open. We can get in and it closes behind us. Then if we build a little terrible staircase, we have a way to get on top of the duck and hide. So to make this a really good hiding place, we need to hide this button really well. So for this, I'm going to use a bunch of our hay bales. This idea of having a secret button that opens the duck was definitely one of my best ideas. And it led to some very funny moments later on. And that's the yellow biome complete. We've only got two biomes left until this build is done. This might actually be one of my favorite builds I've ever done. And to be honest, I'm quite excited to play hide and seek on it. So with my excitement fueling me, it was time to build the brown biome. I used Podzol for the floor and then built some trees by replacing regular leaves with brown mushroom blocks. Then to finish off the penultimate biome, I was finally able to build a normal looking house. We needed to build the dark gray biome. I'm going to use these deep slate bricks to make a large dark gray factory. I can't believe we're nearly finished. All right, that's the roof done. Now let's build a big chimney. 
All right, that looks decent. But to really take it to the next level, let's use some glass as smoke. And it's important we use different kinds of glass so that it really looks like smoke. Oh yeah, that is looking good. And after a few finishing touches to the gray biome, the entire build was finally complete. And it looked amazing. And better yet, it was finished just in time for the $1,000 hide and seek match. I invited my friends to the server and started explaining the rules. I'd be completely invisible with particles turned off. The only way they'd be able to see me is my leather chest plate. I can change the color of my chest plate based on the biome I'm hiding in, so I'll camouflage kind of like a chameleon. They'd have five minutes to find and kill me, and if they did, they'd win $1,000. And I'd be extremely sad. But with that in mind, it was finally time. Three Three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna go hide. Okay, 60, 60. 59, two, one. Let's go! go. <laughs> okay, I'll um, start this way, you start the other way. Okay, okay. Good luck, good luck. Oh, I see them. They're searching. They're searching. Oh my god, this is scary. Check, check these paintings. Oh, there is a secret section behind one of these paintings. <laughs> There's gamers. Where's skill? If you see any paintings, just run into them. Because every painting I found up like a secret thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm working How's my way expect? around. I can't even see. How many I'm have in you the... searched? Do you think? I think I might be on the third. This is my plan. If they see me, I'm going to change to the brown chest plate and jump onto them ladders. Watch trap doors as well. He's got like secret sections with trap doors. Wait, he's coming in the red. He's coming in the red. So we need to find him and we need to kill him. Yeah. Okay, I'm changing. Yes, it worked. Run, run, run. Don't mind me. Guys, you've got 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 what? seconds? What? <laughs> oh, no. I'm in the magenta biome. Magenta biome? And it's done. No. Oh, <laughs> no. Let's go. But because the first game was so fun, I decided to give them one more chance at winning $1,000. All right, round two. Where am I going to hide? If I press this over here, I can hide inside the duck. Yes, I'm in the two, duck. Two. One. one. Let's, Let's go. go. If they get near me, I'm going to change to the lime and then go up on the green island over there. Now, this time, I'm actually going to go in F5 mode seeing the maze. Seven minutes left to survive. This is not good. Wait, if I press this button, it might actually do something I didn't notice last time. Does he see me? Oh, it does something, but I don't know where it does it. No, I think he's going to do it. Come on, I bet he's in it. Where is he? No, he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Okay. Oh, look. Ah, I heard him. Did you? Yeah. What colour are you in? Oh, I see him, I see him! No, he's right there, he's chasing me! <laughs> he's on green, lime green. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, I have to send it back down to him. Okay, now we know He's it. jumping, ah! he's jumping, he's on me! I can see him, I'm chasing him. We found him, now he got. He's in, red, in the red tower, in the red tower. No, he's chasing me! No! Oh, no! I got him! I got him! Yes! <laughs> yes! And that's the story of how I lost $1,000. But at least the biomes now look a lot less boring. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have given them a second chance. But at least $1,000 went to my friend and my brother. So I wasn't too upset. And to be honest, playing Camouflage Hide and Seek was so fun that we decided to play a lot of bonus games on my second channel. Here are some of the best moments from those games. Wait, so how do I do the potion? Do I drink it and then go through? Drink Drink it now and we'll count to 60 and then come through. You have to have a chest plate on, Mimba. I'm going. He's gone. All right, bye. Six, bye, bye. Eight, eight, there he nine, is. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. How long have you got left on your timer, gamers? Uh, Six minutes, 33. Okay. okay. All right, where you at? Should I tell you where I am? Yeah. yeah. I'm on top of the ice tower. No, you're not. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> 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 I was I was searching and then <laughs> you just jumped into the lava. <laughs> yeah. How long have we got left? Four minutes forty. Oh, I keep forgetting we're just looking for a little red chest plate. See mm. you. You're definitely yeah. in the red biome. Oh, I thought I saw him, but it was a bat. <laughs> How did Gilf not see him? Oh my god. <laughs> that was so funny to watch back. Okay. 59. 58. 57. 56. All right, you guys can just come if you want. Let's go. <laughs> One, zero. We're coming. Okay, he's not here. He's not here. Do, do, do. Oh, that's a nice little, a nice little factory you're in. Uh, do you see me behind the TNT or not? 
Lockdown life. I'm stuck in the brown house. Don't check that red tree. I said don't. I said don't. One of you has been in my biome. Which one is that? And it's Gilf. <gasps> the lime one. He's lime. He's, lime. <laughs> he's definitely not. I'll though. send it back down. Wait, you've got he's, two minutes. He's not sending it back down. Two minutes, down. 48. Silly little gamers. That means he's near me. He's here. Oh, I see him. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I do get him. <laughs> I did not <actually> see him. <laughs> no, you can't catch me. I'm a little thing. <laughs> you look like a stingray. I am. Get him. No. Get him. No. Get him. no, he's so low. No. I... Where's he going? I can't see him at all. No! Yes! <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that was a good tactic to say. I'm I think you saw me because I was so obviously in front of you. Looking back on it, I can't believe I actually fell for that, but it did seem like he was looking exactly in my direction. I could have just stayed there and won the game. Okay, where died? 47. 46. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good spot or not. Ooh, I see you, Gil, from lockdown. Where are we? Pink biome. I know where you are. <laughs> How long I'm... have we got left? I am near a tree. And also, within the last minute, Gil I... has run right past me. Oh, that was so annoying to watch back. Why didn't I check in that tree? To be fair, I didn't even know this was a spot. I definitely left that there by accident. Eight, seven, hello lockdown. Where? Can you even see me? No. Turn around. Yeah, time's up. What the hell? <laughs> see ya. 57, 56. Gilf had a very good spot last time that we didn't think of. So yeah, remember. remember it's cheating to be in the actual ocean. You have to stay inside the build. Wow, why do you bring up cheating to me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Okay, well, he's not said it. Ah! I'm <laughs> <already>. <laughs> no. Yes, I'm gonna kill him and get the points. <laughs> no, I'm not kill you. Yes. Can I kill How did you? you find him already? <laughs> no. No! No! Yes! Oh yes! my god, you get a point. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Game number Let's four. Go. All right. Bye, bye bye. See ya. By the way, when you change hiding places, you definitely need to be in a new biome. We'll just make that a rule. 20, 20 19, 29, 18. 18. Oh, that's a good place. There's no way you're finding me. Oh yeah, going oh, up the yeah. tower. Okay, I think he's in, he's in a different side of the map this time. Because we've all hit on over this side. I think he's near. He's definitely near somewhere. He's <laughs> definitely somewhere in the circle. He's definitely hiding. I can just see a gilf just like looking out like a meerkat. Are you sure you can't see me anywhere else? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh, I heard him near me. Heard him near me. Oh, I see him! No! Oh, run, 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 run. Oh, no. No, no. I found the parkour. You're never getting me. Oh, yeah. You will never get these. Oh, no. Yes! No. Oh, I don't think Gilp was actually going to make this jump. Can I do it now? Yep, I can still do it. I don't think he would have made the jump, and I probably could have just stayed hiding here and won the game. Oh. But anyways, there is going to be way more bonus content like that on my second channel in the future, so make sure you're subscribed. But speaking of subscribers, here's when I built your dumb ideas in my hardcore world. Starting with a potato. This is my brain, and inside it, there is no video ideas. So I asked you guys for your ideas, and some of them were pretty good, but also some of them were very stupid. For example, Sniffy11 says, build a big potato. Okay... Okay, this is my giant potato, and it's even got a potato farm inside it. Wait a second, it's actually pretty cool. So let's build some more of your stupid ideas, and at the end of the video, I'll choose my favorite idea, and they'll win $100 and a custom rank on my Discord server. Okay, so Adil Khan says make a wireless teleporter. I think we can do that. So for this, we're going to need some water, some kelp, any type of trapdoor, some ender pearls, and most importantly, a daylight sensor. So to build it, we just dig a hole, put some water at the top, place a bunch of kelp, trapdoor, that is wrong. 
like that, and a daylight sensor. Then we just put a pearl in here, and we forgot about the soul sand. Now we just throw the pearl, then when it goes night, we should be instantly teleported over there. Let's go! Oh my god, there is a creeper. Well, at least it works. But what happens if you don't want to wait until it's night time? Well, don't worry, because I've wow. got a solution to that too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the target block. So if we come up here, we should easily be able to teleport down there. Let's go! First try. <laughs> Anyways, this next comment might be a contender for best comment. Because Kimberly says to build a big capybara. And here's some pictures of capybaras if you don't know what they look like. They're basically the coolest animals to walk the earth. And now, thanks to Kimberly, we get to build it in Minecraft. Alright, this should be a nice spot for our capybara. Alright, that's the brown part of his legs. Okay, now we move on to this colour. Capybara, 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 capybara. And now time for the head. And our capybara is complete. Capybara. Okay, so player two says, how long does it take to grow a strawberry? It's not even a build. What the? Okay, so Jonah says to build Among Us, and Hansel says to build a sus build. So actually, we can take off both of them at the same time. All we need is some red and black concrete powder. Then we just click these switches, head through here, and convert all this concrete powder into concrete. I hope this classifies as a sus build. I mean, I don't think you can get anything more sus than a red Among Us player. And for those of you who don't know what Among Us is, it's basically this game where you have to vote out the imposter. And there we go. That is something very sus. So the next comment is from Dryest Apollo, and he says, build a netherite beacon. Yeah, this might be the dumbest comment so far, but let me explain why. You see, for a netherite beacon, you need 164 blocks of netherite. But when you take into account that that's 1,476 netherite ingots, and to get them, you need 5,904 ancient debris and also 594 gold ingots ingots. Now hopefully you can see just how dumb this is, but let's give it a try. Okay, so to have any chance of this, we need TNT and we need lots of it. Now let's dig down to Y level 15. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to press F3 and G so we can see the chunk borders. All right, and we want to mine it in a straight line along these chunk borders. Okay, now it's time to start placing our TNT, and we'll place it in a nice little pattern like this for the optimum explosion. All of this to try and get ourselves a netherite beacon. Let's light this TNT. Come on, ancient debris. None so far. Oh, yes. Let's go. Oh, we missed some up here as well. Yoink. How is there lava everywhere? Ow. Oh my god! How is there more lava there? Ooh, I'll take this. I swear to god if there's lava. <sighs> literally couldn't make it up. Ah, oh, more lava! Alright, I'll give up. We've literally only managed to get 23 ancient debris. Alright, I guess we're just gonna have to come back to this comment later. So, Penguin also wants me to build a giant tree. I think I've got an idea that will make this one a lot easier. Step one, simply chop down a giant tree. Step two, wait a second. Step three, collect the saplings. And finally, step four, plant the saplings and bone meal them. Oh wait, that tree's not really giant. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. And giant tree. There we go. That's more like it. Also, whilst I was waiting, these chickens laid four eggs. So as I said in the intro, my favorite comment wins $100. But I'll double it to $200 if one of these eggs turns into a chicken. Here we go. And I have to double it. Great. And speaking of the prize, these guys might be winning it. Because Ethan says to build a super large toilet. And Alex says to build a poo with a toilet in it. All right, yeah, these are definitely some of the weirdest slash dumbest comments so far. But that's why they might be my favorite. So for this, we're going to need a bunch of white concrete, some water for the toilet water, and a nice location to build it. Because this is going to be a super large toilet. So first, we're going to build the toilet. Okay, so we'll start with a big base, and we'll build this up a bit. All right, come on. And this bit will actually be the seat, so we can make it even wider. And at the back, we can have a big wall. I think this is what a toilet looks like. All right, now we can add our toilet water. Can it? 
Oh no, I just got rid of my water source. You guys gave me loads of cool builds for this video, including a giant tree, a giant gold statue of myself, this extremely cursed looking cow, a self-detonating machine, an egg, and a giant sign. I even built my own IRL house. This part is actually kind of really weird to look back on because I don't live at my mum's house anymore. And it's actually really accurate. So please don't stalk my mum. Then if we make use of some slabs, we can build ourselves a nice handle. Wow, that actually looks really good, but we should probably move it across one more. Perfect. And now I want to make that handle actually work. It doesn't say to in the comments, but I think it'll be cool. So for this, we'll need some dispensers, which we will place here and here. We need to place a real button on this flusher. And then we need to use redstone torches to rig this up with the dispensers. So when we press the button, does that torch go off? No. Like that. Yes. Then we'll add redstone dust on here. So this is me trying to wire up the toilet so it will actually flush. And I finally got it to work. Now we just need to fix the back of this toilet. Oh my god, what have I done to it? <laughs> so I managed to make the back of the toilet look half decent, and now it's time to do the poo. Alright, and for this, we'll use the brown terracotta we've got left over from building the capybara. Why does he look like he's kind of watching me? <laughs> Anyways, it's poo time. How are we going to make this big enough? I kind of like this idea because it's like the opposite of what you'd expect. Because to be honest, you'd expect the poo to be in the toilet, not the other way around. <laughs> Oh, it works so well. Okay, so we've now got a poo and we've also got our toilet inside. Looking back, why did someone suggest this? And more importantly, why did I actually build it? So, Termit says build an upside down farm with upside down cows and pigs. All right, this is gonna be difficult. Let's start with the easy bit, which is gonna be some dirt and also some fences. Wait a second, that's actually gonna be a problem. How are we gonna get the grass to go upside down? Oh, actually, I think I've got an idea to make this work. We might be able to use moss. All right, so we'll do two layers of dirt here and then we can put a layer of moss under here to act as the grass. All right, so now we've got this upside down piece of land. But to make it a farm, we need cows and pigs like the comments said. Nope, we don't need one of these guys. But I'll tell you what, I'll double the price again to $400 if this egg gives us a chicken. Please, please no, please. Oh, thank God. I did not want that to happen again. All right, we found some cows. Yoink. You are coming with me, sir. And you are coming with me. This way, Mr. Cow. All right, now we need to somehow get these guys to stand upside down on that grass. Yeah. That's going to be easy. Bruh. So my plan here is to put these cows in a hole for now. Get in the hole, guys. Come on, into the hole. Then, actually, we're going to need to destroy this to do a bit of a test. Okay. All right, that cow can go there. So I think that fence needs to go one down. That wow. cow is definitely going to die. <laughs> Look how fast he's going. Um, is there any way I can save this guy? <laughs> okay, but the test was successful. This will all make sense in a second, guys. So we'll put one here, one here, and then... We'll add upside down fences all the way along here, like a farm, but upside down. We can get rid of this, make that all look nice. Okay, now we're going to rename all these name tags to Dinner Bone. And what this should do is make the mob upside down, which is actually really useful for us. So now the plan is to come over here and attach this guy to the fence. Oh my god. I didn't mean for him to hit that. Okay. And then we should just be able to place the moss back Ava, like that. And now he is standing upside down on the farm. So now we just need to get another cow and two more pigs. This actually looks so cool. Let's get the rest of the mobs. Hello, piggy. So dinner bone. And I think that'll do. We could just fill this in and we have an upside down farm. That was really cool, but time is running out now and we've still got one comment to finish off. The netherite beacon. This build is going to be insanely hard to do, but let's gear up and grab all the TNT we've got. So I threw myself into the netherite mines, aiming for what seemed like an impossible goal. Lava was everywhere, but so was ancient debris. It just kept coming, and at one point, I even went crazy. Netherite, netherite, netherite. But after being in there for what felt like days, I returned with enough netherite to make four netherite blocks. But although I didn't complete that idea, it is time to name my favorite idea and the winner of $200. And the winner of my favorite idea goes to the Capybara. Capybara. 
Capybara, 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 Capybara. Oh, I didn't see you there. Um, I'm going on a walk, and whilst I do that, here's how I travelled 120 million blocks. 120 million blocks. That's the same distance as flying around the earth three times or double the distance of a Minecraft map. And I'm going to travel it in less than a second. So to find out how this is possible, you'll need to watch till the very end. A while ago, I made a video where I traveled to the world border and it was really cool. So I want to do it again, but this time see a world border on each side of the map. So let's pick a direction and get walking. Wait a second, we have a big problem. I just did the maps and we walk in Minecraft at four meters per second, which comes out to just under a year of straight walking. There's got to be a faster way. Wait, these would be faster. Be my friend. Wow, this horse is really playing hard to get. I will tame you. Yes, I think he's my friend. Now we need a saddle. And if we put this on him, he is faster than walking, but I think we can do better. Let's try this guy. Okay, yeah, this guy is much faster, but I can't help but think we could get even faster. So I've spent some time building this. Behold, the horse speed measuring machine 3000. So as you might have guessed, this machine is gonna help us measure the speed of the horses. Did you just see my carrot? So let's test this one. Bang, nine blocks per second. That's decent, but as you can see, the fastest horse we can get is around 14 blocks per second. So now let's search for that mystery horse. Perhaps it could even be this one. All right, what will horse number two get? Nine blocks per second. You guys can chill together. Wow, this one's moving fast already. I think this guy feels faster. Horse number four, will he be able to do it? There we go, 10 blocks per second. He's the fastest one so far, so he gets to live in a hole. Bro. Horse number five. Hmm. Horse number six, seven blocks per second. That is terrible. So what if it was a donkey? It should have been a faster donkey. Wait, we already have a horse, but I can't remember if it was fast or not. You shall be horse number seven. All right, here we go. Ooh, 12 blocks per second. You can go in a slightly bigger hole. Now, if we can find another 12 blocks per second horse, we should be able to breed them and get the possibility of an even faster horse. Or at least I think that's how it works. So that's how it went for a while. I would find horses and then measure their speed until this happened. And I definitely didn't have to stay up all night to get this guy. I like how this part is five seconds in the video, but I actually stayed up all night getting the 13 block per second horse. It took absolutely ages. So this horse is about three times faster than walking. So you may be thinking this journey will still take us four months to complete, but that's where you're wrong because one block in the nether actually equals eight blocks in the overworld, meaning this horse won't be traveling at 13 blocks per second. It will be traveling at 13 times eight, which looks like this. Also, there won't be obstacles like this because we'll be doing it on the nether roof. Speaking of which, get in the portal. And I guess let's just see how far you can get in 10 minutes. Starting now. All right, that's 10 minutes. Let's see how far we got. Oh my God, we spawned a zombie spawner. Oh. It's a spider spawner. Wow, 63,000 blocks away. But on my journey, I think I discovered a problem. You see, 10 minutes is quite a long time, especially if you have to hold down W that entire time. I mean, my hand kind of hurts now. Imagine it after 120 million blocks. So unfortunately, I think that rules the horse method out. At this point, I was feeling quite sad. I had spent days trying to get the perfect horse and it was all for nothing. But that's exactly when I had an idea for a machine that would change everything. It will be made out of slime blocks and honey blocks and it will be a flying machine that flies us all the way to the world border automatically. This machine took me a while to build and unfortunately, it really wasn't worth the extra time. Right, it's been 10 minutes and I broke the machine, but let's see how far we got. Okay, looks like we're in some kind of weird cave. But the most important thing is, wait, we only got 11,000 blocks away. That is so slow. What are we actually gonna do? So I've discovered a way to travel 60 million blocks across the map and then 60 million back in only a few seconds. But this is gonna take a lot of preparation, so let's get to work. 
Oh, I don't have my electron. The first thing we're gonna need is about 60 shulker boxes. So thank God for last episode. To build the machine that's gonna let us travel in seconds, we're gonna need redstone and a bunch of these other items. To make this work, we first need to travel to each of the world borders and actually set up the machine. And to do this, first, we're gonna need some more elytras. I say we're gonna need at least 60 more. Bring on the end city. A lot of searching later and I had all the elytras I needed. Now we're gonna make them even better by adding unbreaking three and mending to each one. These guys are about to get a lot of business. All right, that's mending added to everything. And that's unbreaking added to everything too. The next thing we need is rockets because without them, elytras are pretty useless. I gathered a load of gunpowder from the creeper farm and paper from the sugarcane farm and then crafted a load of flight duration three fireworks. Okay, with these two shulkers in here, we now have 34 shulker boxes full of flight duration three rockets. That's gonna be more than enough. So now let's just get our final few items. Firstly, a shulker box of totems because this journey is gonna be dangerous. Now we're gonna need a bunch of golden carrots so we don't starve to death. And now we should probably make sure all of our elytras are at full health. Oh, yeah. It is so loud. And now we'll just craft up a bunch of ender chests so we can have constant access to our items. Nice. And finally, the last thing we need to do is build all the redstone. So this first thing is gonna be a chunk loader. And now we just build the exact same thing in this nether fortress. I might just block this off quickly. Now all we need to do is fill this up with blocks and fill this up with blocks. And now it should be working. Yes, it's working. Basically, all it does is throw sand through the portal, which will keep this chunk loaded even when I'm millions of blocks away. So for this, we're going to need a daylight sensor and we're going to set it to night mode. Then we're going to dig down here and make ourselves a nice ender pill stasis chamber, which should work if we just do this. Nice. Then we can add this trap door and wait till nighttime to throw the pearl. Don't worry if you don't understand this redstone stuff because I've literally spent hours coming up with this plan and I barely understand it. Bruh. Anyways, now we need another one of these chambers. That is not right. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. But this time we need a big delay. Then we just need a redstone torch here and a button. Let's just make sure it works. All right, looks good. Now I'm just gonna get my inventory sorted and when it turns night, we'll throw the pills and we'll be on our way to the first world border. Okay, it's night now, let's throw our pills. They're all good. And now let's start our 30 million block journey to the first world border. All right, so we're gonna head directly up first. And I think we're literally gonna do this until we break our first elytra. As you can see, I've put the mini HUD in the top left so you guys can always see the coordinates. I wonder how high we're gonna get. I think my first elytra is about to break. Oh, there it goes. Uh, let's not lose too much height. And then we'll do the same until this breaks. And then we should be able to just glide from there. It won't take us all the way to the world border, but we'll just see how far we can go. Not gonna lie, seeing this high number is actually making me a bit nervous now. Like what if I get stuck at the world border? This could actually be the end of my world. I've literally been flying straight up for about an hour now. All right, so we've got four and a half hours worth of elytras, and I think this is gonna take about 20 hours, so I'm gonna be awake for a long time. Right, a little update. We just ran out of heights and we've nearly ran out of elytras and we're at 835,000 blocks away. So now we're just gonna restock, get more fireworks, and now literally repeat the same process of flying straight up in the air for thousands of blocks. I'm literally having to click my mouse every second for multiple hours to do this video. I'm pretty sure clicking fireworks like this in this video nearly gave me a repetitive strain injury. But it was worth it because you guys seem to really like the video. All right, here we go. We're about to reach it. Once we hit 3.75 million blocks, we are at the world border. And there we go. Now it's time to get to work. The first thing we need to do is build a chunk loader. 
Before we light it and go through the portal, we need to make sure that it's nighttime when we come out. And the only way to do that is to wait until the day number changes and then wait an extra 10 minutes. All right, the number just changed. So now we just wait exactly 10 minutes. If we get the timing wrong, this entire idea will be ruined. Okay, when the timer goes off, we light the portal and go through. Oh my God. We're only gonna have about eight minutes to build everything. So we need to make sure we do it fast. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Oh my God, we're exactly at the world border. Wait, is that gonna be a problem? Let's break this portal and instead let's make it more central in this chunk. Wait, I think it's nearly daytime. We're not gonna have enough time this time. So let's just set this up as best as we can. All right, we'll leave it like this for now and we'll come back tomorrow and do it. That went so badly. All right, it's time and there's a zombie. Okay, it's all been leading up to this. Will this work? The first thing we need to do is throw a pearl. Now we need to do this next part really fast. Otherwise this entire video is gonna be scrapped. Okay, so click and then sleep straight away. When we wake up, we're teleported. We need to click that button. And then we'll be teleported all the way back 30 million blocks. And then we need to throw a pearl there. Perfect. And now we're back at spawn, but we have a pearl all the way at the world border. Oh, that was stressful, but thank God it actually worked. Right now, before we leave to the next world border, we need to make our way home, which is going to involve a lot of repeaters. So let's grab all of these and a bunch more repeaters. And now we just put as much delay as possible. All right, that should do. And now we just throw our pearl here and that's our way home sorted. However, during the last couple of hours, the magnitude of what I'm doing dawned on me. My PC had been running Minecraft for over 50 hours straight and coming up with the plan nearly drove me crazy. And I'd added nearly 300 days to my hardcore world. And yet, if I was successful, I was about to travel nearly half the speed of light, all in a block game. And there we go, we are here. Let's see the world border. There it is. It's in a complete different biome to the other one well obviously it's literally 60 million blocks away right is it gonna work so it should work if we put a block on here yes it's working all right we need to be quick all right straight away in this chunk dig down water on top soul sand kelp 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 nice kelp all the way to the top break it and we'll set that to 0.5 seconds. That's how long that is. And if we throw a pearl, all right, it's set up. So when it goes night, we are gonna be teleported from here, X equals 30 million, to X equals minus 30 million, and then back again to here for a total of 120 million blocks traveled. All this work leading up to this. Okay, we're about to find out, is this actually gonna work? Come on, please, we put so much work into this. Yes! Oh my god, it actually worked! Let's go! There we go. We are back at base. This ending has got to be one of the most epic moments of my videos this year. But this has got to be one of my most ambitious video ideas. This is a massive tier list and I'm going to use it to rank every mob in Minecraft. But to do that, we need to collect all 75 mobs and trap them inside it. So I think this chicken will be our first mob. But now the question is, which tier does the chicken go in? And we're going to have to decide this for every single mob. Meaning by the end of the video, we'll be able to see which mobs are the best and which mobs are the worst in my opinion of course but i'm always right i put a lot of the easier mobs to collect into their spots in the tier list such as the chicken the cow and a sniffer which was pretty easy because i've got a thousand sniffers anyways let's get the next mob and this one might actually be the first god tier mob but not for the reason you'd expect because this is my dog mark and he's been with me since the start of my 5000 day hardcore journey he's even got his own security dog that's how much i value him so i want to put him as the first mob in the god tier and if you didn't know mark is a dog so he loves bones he also loves killing sheep so we should also use some wool and finally, Mark's favorite color is blue. So we're going to use some blocks of lapis as the floor for his build. And these guys are officially the first top tier mobs. Wait, I'm pretty sure this was a thunderstorm, but now it's stopped. Oh, we're going to have to wait ages to get the thunderstorm mobs. That's so annoying. So we've now trapped 18 of the 75 mobs, including most of the water mobs. And I say most because we've still got the guardian and the elder guardian to collect. They're going to be really hard and I still 
still don't know how we're gonna get them. So whilst I'm trying to think of a way to do it, why don't we capture this guy? And he's invisible. Great. I then moved on to the water mobs like the salmon, cod, puffer fish, and the dolphin. Why don't we do the villager next? And to make it more interesting, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to capture the villager. And if I don't do it, I have to do the raid mobs next. And that will be extremely hard. So I've got 10 minutes starting from now. All right, luckily for me, there is a village right here but it still might be a struggle getting the villager all that way. We will take this guy. I'm gonna craft a boat. Come on, get in the boat, get in the boat. Yes, he's in. Okay, now we need to dig our way through this forest back to the thing. All right, I'm digging out a two wide pathway all the way there. No, uh -huh. there's stone in the way. Oh, this is gonna slow it down a lot. All right, here he is. Okay, can we get there in time? Oh, it's gonna be close. We just have to get him into the tier list and it counts. Why are boats so slow on land? Oh my God, this tunnel's so long. I see the minecart track. If we get him on that, we might actually be able to do it. All right, come on, quick, quick, quick. And minecart, push him on. Okay, go, go, go. Have we actually done this? I think we have. Yes, the villager is in the tier list. That counts and we did it in less than 10 minutes. No, no. Oh my God. I guess we're doing the raid mobs. So for this to work, we need to kill every wave except the last one. Yeah, we should probably keep some of these villagers alive because we still need to trap one. You are safe. That's two waves done. Oh no, we've got this guy. Oh, how are we even going to trap this guy? <laughs> that doesn't matter for now, we just need to kill him. All right, so this is wave seven, which means it's the last wave. So we have to trap the mobs this round. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, one hot. Yes, we have one of the axe guys in the boat. Can this guy go in a boat? No, no, I don't think he can. There's the regular pillager. Okay, here's the ravager. So we need to get him in this pit. Yes, we have it in the pit. And can we get a Vex in a boat? Oh, they're just going to despawn and die anyway. But what we do need is an Evoker. Yes, we've got an Evoker in a boat. Here's a witch. Yes, I think that's all the raid mobs trapped. Okay, now we need to name tag the mobs so they don't despawn. Yes. Okay, now let's start transporting them. And we'll start with the easier ones first. He literally can't even hit me. No, no, no. Oh my God. I should probably pay attention. Yes, he's in. All right go. And because pillagers are pretty boring, I'm going to put them in the second lowest tier. This is his nice enclosure and he is trapped. Now let's set the track up for the evoker, which is going to be on the second top level. I am really not looking forward to this one. No, there's a vex in it. Oh my god. We're going to have to come back and get the evoker later. But for now, let's try and get this bad boy. He's literally destroying all of these trees. I think we'll put him next to where the evoker was going. And his enclosure is going to have to be a lot bigger. Please let this work. All right, come on, Ravager. Follow me. Get in the minecart. Yes, he's in. Don't die. Whatever you do, please don't die. No, no, no. No. Okay. He's not dead. Okay, he's trapped. Let's go. So now that we've got pretty much all the raid mobs, we can finally get the villager. All right, there's one in here. Now get on the truck. Come on. Yes. And because the villager's really annoying, but it is also really useful, I think it belongs in the middle tier. Next up, I managed to go on a bit of a collection spree and got a load of mobs, such as the fox, a bee, and an alley. But now, I think it's finally time we start getting the nether mobs. So first up, I got the zombie piglin. And I think this guy belongs in the very middle tier. But then skeletons were really annoying me, so I decided to capture one. And that is the skeleton trapped. And afterwards, I trapped the magma cube. Nope, no, nope. that definitely doesn't work. Yes, okay, it went through, but it did get cut in half, All right? And yes, yeah, I think I made that enclosure a bit too big. And speaking of big enclosures, this guy's enclosure is gonna have to be massive. Well, not that specific one. So before we capture a ghast, let's capture all of the easier nether mobs, like the strider, piglin, blaze, and wither skeleton. Now there are only three nether mobs that we need, and all of them are gonna be extremely hard. But we don't have any time to mess around because my girlfriend leaves for a holiday in three days. And after that point, we won't be able to show her any of the mobs, meaning all our work will have been pointless. And so the first of the hard nether mobs is the hoglin, slash Zoglin, but the adult one. Surely it's mom or dad is going to be nearby. Oh yes, here we go. This guy hurts so much, but he's still the easiest of these three mobs. All right, no gas. We don't need that right now. No. Oh my God. Don't you dare. Come on, get in the minecart. Yes, it's in. 
Ow! Okay, now we'll get a name tag using a subscriber's name. Now follow me, Mr. Hoglin. Oh wait, he's gonna turn into a Zoglin. Yeah, and I think these fat pigs are really cool. So I'm gonna put them on the second top layer. And he's trapped. Let's go. The next hard nether mob is somewhere in there. If you haven't guessed already, we're looking for the piglin brute. All right. Uh, please don't hit me. Okay, you're named. Ow! And now to use this railway that I spent literally nearly an hour building. Ow. Get- No! Oh my god. Go on the mine truck. And whilst I was busy thinking of the third and final hard nether mob, this happened. Oh my god, he just turns into a zombified pig, man. So my only choice was to get another piglin brew and this time keep him in the nether. And just for the record, I ranked him on the second lowest tier. Then I also decided to get both the hoglin and the piglin in the nether as well. Meaning we can officially say that we've collected 47 out of the 75 mobs. And that there's only one nether mob left. But that one mob is like the final boss of the nether. It's the ghast. I've literally been dreading this moment all video. But let's give it a go. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make this portal a lot bigger. Okay, this should be big enough. Now we somehow need to get a ghast into a minecart. Maybe if we use a fishing rod? Yes, I'm literally pulling a ghast. This way, Mr. Ghast. I'm just taking you for a... No, I lost it. Yes, get in the minecart. Yes, he's in. Okay. No, no, no. Don't suffocate. All right, quickly. We need to push him. Oh, no. There's a gap. Will this actually work? Please work. No. So I'm going to do some more research on how to capture a ghast. But whilst I do that, let's get the evoker. That way, at least we can finally take off all the raid mobs. Let's go. There's an evoker. Get in the boat. Oh. Oh my god. According to Chazza, who just did this video, the Evoker was one of the hardest ones to catch. Yes, he's in. Okay, now if we push this, it should pick him up. Yes, why is there a zombie pig man? No, no, no. Are you kidding me? There is still another wave, so let's try that again. Oh, one of them is already trapped. Yes, he's in the boat. Yes. Yes! All right, come on. If I've done this right, it should go straight into its cell. Okay, come on. No. Oh, not mining fatigue. Yes, I think it's working. We have to break. No, go the other way. No. All right, come on. If we put a button here. Yes, break the boat. And that's the evoker officially trapped. And my helmet's broken. What the hell? Yeah, I think that might have been the easiest mob so far. Anyways, now I want to focus on getting the thunderstorm mobs ticked off. Wait, but it's raining. Is it a thunderstorm though? Yes! Oh my god, uh, we need our trident fast. All right, quick, grab it. All right, first up, we should be able to get the brown mushroom. Oh my god. No, the thunderstorm stopped. And we literally don't have long left until my girlfriend goes on holiday. But even though things were going wrong, the knowledge that we had collected 52 mobs already kept me going. And so I managed to go back and capture the ocelot with a lead. And then I managed to locate the final jungle mob. Hello, Mr. Panda. And we can't put a lead on him. Yes. Why is his neck literally broken? Hopefully he's all right. <laughs> he seems happy enough with his enclosure already, but let's give him some bamboo and let's upgrade his enclosure even more. Hodzle, then a couple of melons, and finally, of course, a lot of bamboo. After the panda, I managed to go on a streak of getting the mobs really easily. So next, I traveled to the snowy biome to get both the polar bear and the stray. Then I traveled thousands of blocks to get the camel from my camel paradise. And I also got the husk from a desert. I then managed to trick a silverfish into the nether and trap him in a yellow box. Then next up, I got a glow squid in the exact same way I got a squid earlier and also finally got a drowned. Not this one though, because it had a trident, which reminded me that I needed to get another mushroom so I'd be ready for the next thunderstorm. And after getting that, I got an enderman, which I thought looked really cursed in a minecart. And then I was also easily able to trap a little purple bug by spamming ender pills. And finally, to end the streak, I got an insanely annoying cave spider and then stayed awake for three Minecraft days so I could trap a phantom. So all of that progress meant that with only one day until my girlfriend leaves on holiday, we have just 10 mobs left to collect. They are some of the hardest mobs to collect in the entire game. And of course, one of which is the ghast. 
But luckily, I think I finally figured out a way to trap one. So first things first, let's grab some materials for its enclosure. And we'll put this guy in the second bottom tier because they are insanely annoying. All right, and now we need to replace these blocks with obsidian so that we can make a giant portal for the gas to enter its enclosure. Perfect. Now we'll use some ladders and some ender pills to get on top of the bedrock. We'll build up a bit. And now we build the thing that should make this all possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the Gas Catcher 4000. Wow. This is a design by Google and apparently it's meant to help us catch a gas. Because this is built in a soul sand valley, a gas should spawn. Yes, the gas has spawned. Okay, it's named. Now we need to get it in a minecart. Okay, it's in the minecart. Now, if we click this lever, it should go into the portal. Come on. It went through. Yes, there's a gas. And I'm going to break this portal so it can't go back through. It kind of looks a little bit weird with the tentacles going through the floor, but we don't have time to worry about that because we have to get the bat and the slime. And both the bat and the slime require a dark place to spawn that's underground level. Wait a second though, because there is a swamp nearby, so we might be able to get a slime from there. Yes, there's a slime. It's a tiny one, but it's still a slime. And that is the slime trapped. The bat was also a nightmare to get. Oh. Stay still. Okay. I think it's trapped in that little area. Maybe if we put some rails there and then put a rail there and then put a minecart. Can it get in the minecart? I don't think bats will go in minecarts or boats. We need to get the bat from there to there and we can't use minecarts or boats or leads. We could use the nether though. So similar to what we did with the ghast, if we build the bat's enclosure over here and then replace the back of the enclosure with a nether portal, we should be able to use this to transport the bat into here. So after building the tunnel in the nether to connect the two portals and slowly pushing the bat along, yes, I think it went through. Are you kidding me? I left a hole in the enclosure. All right, this time I am not making the same mistake. Slowly but surely we are progressing. Yes. The bat went through. Break the portal. Let's go. The bat literally can't escape. That was definitely the hardest mob so far. But this next one might be even harder. Because we need to transport a shulker all the way from the end dimension to our tier list. But after placing a lot of rails and a lot of trial and error, I finally trapped one. And after collecting all of the thunderstorm mobs, we only had one mob left. The warden. It's so deadly that if we put it in the tier list, it would likely kill all of the mobs. So instead, we've got a special containment unit set Set up in the nether. Here we are. And there is the portal to the ancient city. Let's do this. Let's collect the final mob. And we're gonna have to do it fast because we've only got like two hours until my girlfriend has to leave. Please let this not be the end of my hardcore world. Let's try and get him to spawn somewhere over here. Here we go. All right, there he is. Come on, warden. Follow me. Oh my God, this is one of the scariest things I've ever done. Ow, where's the portal? I can't see. All right, through here. Why is there a zombie pigment? Oh my god, no. I think he went through. Okay, now we need to be very careful when we go through. Oh my god. It's the other side. There he is. Follow me, warden. Can't see anything. No, not a gas. That's not what we need right now. Okay, it's in the pen. I need to get him out of there so I can build something in there to keep him alive. Okay, that should be enough time. Now we start running. So this should make noise and keep him attacking it. Because he hates noise. Okay, there we go. All right, quickly, we'll just name tag him. Yes, he's name tagged. I don't know if that makes a difference, but he should follow us in here. And then we'll run around and block it up. He's in. No. Right, come on. Block it up, block it up. Yes. Yes. Let's go. That's the warden trapped. Oh my God. I think I used about 20 totems. And if I had to put him on a tier, I'd definitely put him on the bottom tier. So we now have a complete tier list of all the mobs in Minecraft. And now it's finally time for my girlfriend's reaction. I wonder which one will be a favorite. Okay, this is every mob in the game. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so now that she'd seen all of Minecraft's mobs, which one was her favorite?
That acts a lot on. But I like the pink ones best. But in the end, the issues were definitely all worth it because the build just looks so cool. And speaking of builds that look really cool, this nether portal optical illusion has to be one of my favorites. This is my working end portal, but it's actually an illusion. So today we're going to recreate this effect, but with a nether portal instead. And by the end of the video, we'll be able to hop through this portal into the nether. To make this happen, we need to transform three areas, the river, land, and even the sky. And I think we're going to start with the river because last I checked, there wasn't water in the nether. Well, at least not without YouTubers. So phase one is transforming the river. But first, we need to get rid of all this water. Water. And for that, we need sponges. Getting the sponges took me so much time, but after killing the Elder Guardian, I managed to farm a good amount. All right, and now that we've got sponges, we can build walls of sand like this. Oh my God, these fish are like right on the line. <laughs> they are about to lose their home. Placing the sand is definitely what takes the longest. I wonder if there's a faster way. We just need to put this here and now, Wow, this is working so good. Ow. So I think we'll use this setup for the rest of these lines. Like this, and that, and... All right, I think it stopped working because this piston can't push that many blocks. So to fix it, we'll just move it down there. And we'll just repeat this process for the rest of the river. All right, and now the river is completely drained, it's time to start filling it up with lava. But before we do that, we need to make all these layers one layer deep, like this area. Nice, now it's time to add the lava, and I think the lava is really going to bring this illusion to life. So let's go and get some. Ow. Oh, this is so annoying. If only there was some magical item that would make this so much easier. Wait a second. Perfect. This is going to be so much easier. All right, the lava river is now complete. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. But we've still got a lot more to do, so let's move on to phase two, transforming all this land. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of all these trees because I don't think there's any jungle trees in the nether. Yes. Burn everything, burn. I guess whilst everything's burning, let's plan out the areas for this build. So I was thinking to the left of the portal, we'll have the warped forest. And then here at the back where the bamboo is, we'll have the basalt delta biome. And then next to that, we'll have the nether wasteland biome with maybe a nether fortress in it. Then next is the soul sand valley, which will look really cool with all the bone blocks. And finally, we'll have a small crimson forest biome just to the right of the portal. All right, now that we've got our plan, let's get to work. There's a few important things we need. Firstly, we're gonna need a bunch of this this stuff and this is literally going to cover the entire area and just make it look exactly like this biome okay that should be good for now another thing is these vines they're quite a distinctive feature of this biome um do you guys mind and of course we need a bunch of these trees but we can use the mushrooms and just bone meal them into the trees later all right that should be good and now we've somehow got to make this area look like the nether okay so let's first start by extending this bit a little bit out into the lava just so you can actually see this from the portal a bit more and then we'll go along the edge and convert all this first so at this point i came up with the idea to look at this screenshot and then map out the area that you can actually see through the portal all right this is the area that we need to transform and this little segment is going to be the warped forest so let's put down all the nicelium all right, that's the first out of the five biomes complete. Now we're moving on to the next biome, which is the Basalt Delta biome. And luckily there is one right here. And I think we're gonna build it over here because the basalt pillars are kind of like the nether's bamboo. I mean, sort of. We'll start here with some taller spires. Actually, if we make them tall enough, you won't be able to see all that land back there, which will then save us a bunch of time. I think rather than building one pillar at a time, we're going to build the foundations of loads of them. And that way we won't have to take loads of full damage. Okay, and now we'll build this back layer up. All right, that's looking good. Now let's build the rest of the spires. 
And that is the second biome complete. Now onto the nether wastelands biome. So first, we're going to place a blanket of netherrack on this entire area. This would be a lot easier without mobs. And also a lot easier without all this grass. No, no, no! Oh my god, no! Oh my god. God. Well, there goes three minutes of my life. Bruh, 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 bruh. All right, that's all fixed and all the grass is gone. Let's get back to Operation Netherrack Blanket. And there we go. Operation Netherrack Blanket is complete. And with the final touch of some flowing lava, that is the Nether Wastelands biome complete. Only two more to go now and the next one is the Soul Sand Valley. This illusion is actually looking so cool. So we need to collect some Soul Sand and some Soul Soil. And then of course we're also going to need a bunch of bone blocks. And now we just fill in this middle area. Then we'll add our bones. Very nice. And now we'll finish the biome off with a sprinkling of these little red bushes that no one cares about. And just like that, we've only got one biome left to do. The Crimson Forest. I mean, to be honest, this biome only has a slither of land in the illusion. So we're not going to need to collect too many blocks. So just a bit of this stuff. A couple of mushrooms and some vines. Okay, so we just replace all this green grass with this nice red nether grass. All right, and now we decorate the place and carefully add a couple of trees. We can't put any here because it would block the entire illusion. So maybe let's try here. Hmm, it kind of blocks all the bones. I think we might have to build our own tree like that one over there. And just like that, all five biomes are complete. But before we move on to phase three, I kind of feel like it's missing something. I can't quite put my finger on it. So let's look in the nether and see if we've missed anything. Ah, right structures. Ooh. And I think we'll start with the ruined nether portal. Yeah, that's a lot more nethery. And of course, the final touches, we can put all this gold stuff in this chest. I don't know why this matters, but let's just do it. This ruined nether portal is also kind of pointless because you can't see it at all through this portal. But in my opinion, what really makes this build look cool is definitely the nether fortress and the red sky. They both just help to make this illusion look and feel like the nether. This ruined nether portal is also kind of pointless because you can't see it at all through this portal. But in my opinion, what really makes this build look cool is definitely the nether fortress and the red sky. Now let's move on to the major structure. And for this, we're going to need our beacon. And here we are, the nether fortress. Now we can just build our beacon here. And hopefully this will work down below. It's working here. No, it looks like it's just a bit too low. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. I then gathered all the nether mobs I needed, name tagged them, and put them in their respective biomes. All right, now that we've got the materials, I think we'll build it on top of that netherrack hill. And we're basically going to build one of those nether fortress bridges. I think that'll work really well with this hill, and it'll look really cool in the illusion. So let's get to work. Right, and with that done, I'm pretty happy with the structures in this illusion. But this magma cube has given me an idea. Why don't we get mobs and put them in their respective biomes to really sell this illusion and make it seem like you're actually looking into the nether. Okay, we've got this magma cube. Uh, Come with me. Go on, parkour. He's coming. No, this way. Yes, I think he went through. And we'll call this first one Linus. Hmm. We need to make sure the mobs don't escape from this area. So let's maybe build like a barrier going all the way around. And with a few more of these guys, the land has been completely transformed. So that is phase two complete. The only thing that tells us we're not in the nether is the sky. So that's what we're gonna transform in phase three. My plan for this is to convert the sky into a red color by putting a layer of red stained glass in front of the sky. But for this to work, we're gonna need a hell of a lot of glass and I know just where to get it. This is my super smelting asteroid, and it can literally smelt thousands of blocks an hour. The only problem is we don't have much fuel left. Well, we have zero. Wait a second, I think I've got an idea. We might be able to use wood logs as a fuel. Or better yet, we'll be able to use the asteroid to smelt the wood into charcoal. And then we can use that charcoal to smelt all the glass we need. So that's the plan, and the first step is to get lots of wood. 
Okay, we've got the wood. Let's load it into the super smelter. Okay, now loads and loads of charcoal is being produced. And the entire thing is running on charcoal as well. So we can go and get some sand from our duper. And now we can load up the super smelter. Then after a little bit of waiting, we have loads of glass. But we're still not done because we don't need clear glass. We need red glass. And I just wasted two glass. So for this, let's click this red plant loads transform it into red dye and dye all of this glass all right perfect that's all the red stained glass we need now it's just figuring out where to actually build it okay so it starts about there so if we build out to here and then build a line all the way across it's just figuring out where we actually stop okay and i'm pretty sure that is about high enough so i guess all that's left to do now is to get building All right, phase three is now complete. I have transformed the sky, which means the illusion is complete. So this is what it looked like at the start, and this is what it looks like now. I remember using a lot of shulker boxes for this build. So it's a good job earlier in the year, I made this video. This is my 3,300 day hardcore world, and it's full of lots of epic builds that all have one thing in common. They're made out of lots of blocks, which is a problem because lots of blocks don't fit in my inventory. But there's a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the shulker box. Oh wait, we don't have any. If only we had an unlimited supply. Once we fill this giant and shulker box with shulker boxes will have an unlimited supply. So let's get to it. To obtain shulker boxes, we first need to go back to the basics. One shulker box is made from two shulker shells and one shulker chest in the middle to make a delicious shulker box sandwich. So it looks like we need some wood. And bang, that's 53 chests. And for the second ingredient, we need to head to the end. And here we go, our perfectly transformed end portal. Now we just fly away from the solar system and past the flat earth. We should arrive at an end city. So it's time to extract all the shulker shells. Our first victim. I think you can hide. There's no hiding from lockdown. I get it. You think you're clever. Not very clever anymore. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's all the shulkers from this NC. And we have enough to make eight shulker boxes. There's got to be a faster way of doing this. So I left the end city and threw myself into the world of research, trying to find a way to get thousands of shulker shells. However, I wasn't having any luck and I was starting to lose hope until I clicked on this video. This is going to save us so much time. Oh, wait. That is a lot of resources. Collecting the resources for this thing took me absolutely ages and included building a really advanced cobblestone generator. And now it's time to build one of the most overpowered shulker farms in the world. Well, definitely in my world. I guess let's just see how far into the void we can go. Okay, I think this is far enough. I guess now we just need a platform to actually put the shulker farm on. So... And now the only thing stopping us from building this farm is these guys. Perfect, and it's time to build. And now we make a 10 by 10 platform. But now it's time for scaffolding. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna need a bunch of this. I think we just need to do this all the way around. Okay, next we come down here, place a piston like that a regular block like this and a lever here and now we need to get out of the hole then behind here we are going to build a observer clock i'm not exactly sure how to build one of these but let's just follow the tutorial oh it looks pretty easy actually it's just perfect yeah that's kind of annoying we're literally just adding more and more layers to the farm like a sandwich so the shulkers have the maximum area to spawn. Okay, it's time for another layer, but this one's not going to be like the others. Five blocks this way. Now we need it a bit wider. Oh, wait, no, not like that. This bit. And then the rest of this can just be filled in with bottom slabs. And now it's time to build the storage system. But I've just realized we forgot to bring our chests. Oh! All right, so for this, it's important to make sure none of these blocks are spawnable. So basically, no shulker box can move onto it. And I want to extend this a bit from the tutorial and put a few more chests. We need to make sure the additional chests are spawn-proofed as well. I think the shulkers are actually going to teleport to that. 
We need to find another solution. So I was looking in the comments of the tutorial for some solutions and this guy suggested using an auto drop system with soul sand because soul sand isn't a full block, meaning shulkers can't teleport to it. Well then, to the nether we go. I know I should probably fix my shovel, but it should be fine to just get this. But now we should be all right if we surround this all with soul sand. Okay, and now we want to make sure that shulkers can't teleport onto the chest, which means we need to build them under this platform. So this is going to be difficult. No, this is pretty risky. I'm in danger. All right, this should be low enough if we can get a block on the side of here. Nice. Okay, and we can just build out the platform. Okay, and then we'll replace all this dirt with bottom slabs. I really hope I don't make a mistake here. All right, I think this should be good enough. If we add buttons to here, it should make it even safer as well. Okay, the storage system is looking good. All right, next we need to do something like this. Get out of the way. So annoying. Now we just get rid of these and place a trap door like this. Yes, now the next step is going to get rid of these guys. All right, now if we just fly away and go back, <laughs> all the endermen are gone. And now it's back to making the sandwich. Okay, now it's time to build some staircases. Then we do something like... And the same on this side. Oh, <laughs> how did I miss that jump? Wait, I'm just gonna stop this from making a noise because it's really annoying. Now we place some stairs like this and some levers over here. Okay, now we just put activator rails here, powered rails here, then we put a temporary one here, then break it and yes the activator rail should go on a slope like this then we place powered rails up here go all the way up break this one then a slab like that and same on the other side looking good now we place slabs on all of this then a block here and slabs like this going across and now another sandwich layer and from here we just do the finishing touches to the sandwich Okay, we're nearly done. There's just a few final things to do. Minecart's there and there. Also, we can put the observer back. Now we need to make sure this lever is turned on like that. We also need to make sure there's no possible blocks the shulker could teleport to. So let's move all these. And we don't have a shovel. Yeah, I'm gonna go get one. Oh, and whilst I'm here, I'll grab a bunch of rails and redstone torches. Okay, this is a lot better. Okay, the farm is ready. Now it's time for Operation Shulker Collection. This operation is going to have multiple steps. And step number one is building a railway all the way from here to the end city. Wait, where did you get that block from? Anyways, this end is done. Now it's just the end city end. But before we do this, let's make sure to use our potion of invisibility. Ooh, I'm a ghost. All right, now we'll continue like normal up until the end city. Wait, why are they shooting at me? I've got invisibility on. Maybe they can see my armor? We need to be careful this doesn't run out. All right, now we need to build some kind of pickup system. Wait, what? And we need to use the potion of regen to make sure they don't hurt each other. All right, so we need to build something like this, like this. Yes, he's going to the farm. Please let this work. He's making his way across the bridge. It says in the tutorial it can take up to five minutes to get in the right place. So we'll just give it that time. Yes, it's finally in the right place in the farm. Now we can just delete all of this. And all that's left to do now is start the farm. Let's see how many shulker shells we can get in one hour. Okay, it's the next day. It's been about 12 hours. Let's see how many shulker shells we've got. Oh my god. Yeah, that's enough shulker shells for 4,000 shulker boxes. So that means one part of the recipe is now ticked off. All we need to do now is somehow get 4,000 chests. And we're going to do this by following this tutorial to build one of the most overpowered wood farms in the game. Yeah, this build needed a lot of honey blocks. So after using my honey farm and gathering the rest of the resources, I built a really OP wood farm and let it do its thing. Right, I just got back from the gym. Let's see how much wood we got. Oh my god, yes. And the same on the other side as well. Now we can finally craft all the shulker boxes we need. So finally, after hours of collecting resources, making these farms, and using these farms, it's finally time to craft the shulker boxes. That's five shulkers of shulker shells. Oh my god. And that is kind of hard to say. Now let's convert all of this wood into chests. Well, first we need to make a crafting table. Thank you. 
Yeah, this is gonna take a while. And finally, we have all the shulker shells, all the chests. Now let's combine them into shulker boxes. How many shulker boxes does it take to fill a shulker? Let's fill it up. I have heard stories that this has broken some people's worlds, but um, let's hope that doesn't happen. And let's make sure not to put our firework one in here because without it, we won't be able to get home. <laughs> Wow, this is the most shulker boxes I've ever had. And after another hour of shulker box placing, we have finally done it. This shulker box stores over 7 million items. Wait a second, where's my rocket shulker? No! I remember being so scared about building this farm because I thought it would be really complicated. But it actually wasn't that hard and it works so well. The hard part was definitely getting the shulkers into the farm. Right now, it's been about 10 months since we finished this build. So let's do a little update and see how many shulker boxes we've actually used. And in 10 months, we've used 76 shulker boxes. That is a lot, but it's nothing compared to the amount of shulker boxes we've got here. It's also not a lot compared to the amount of camels we collected in this video. I can't actually remember where I built this video. All right, we're finally here. It was 50,000 blocks away. And of course, this is the video I made for when the camel was released in 1.20. And to be honest, I remember really enjoying this video. This is a camel. It's Minecraft 1.20's newest mob and i want to be the first person to get 1000 camels in a hardcore minecraft world and of course to store 1000 camels we're gonna have to create a massive camel paradise with everything a camel needs but to make that happen we need to find our first camel i'm not really sure how far to go i just know we need to be thousands of blocks away from our base mom we're nearly there okay i think here we'll do now from here, we need to find ourselves a desert. The reason it's important to find a desert is camels only spawn in desert villages. Yeah, this is a bit too small of a desert. Wait, let's go. It's a desert. There's got to be a village. Yes. Oh my God. Let's go. We have ourselves a camel. Oh my God. I am on a camel. These things are so tall. Imagine what a thousand of them is going to look like. Speaking of which, to get more camels, we're going to need to breed them, which requires two camels. So for now, this guy can get in the hole. One camel down, one camel to go. Come on, there's got to be another village. Yes, and another camel. Perfect. Wait, but how are we going to transport this camel to the other village? All we need is some cacti and hopefully... Yes, the camel should follow us and they also eat it. We have a long journey ahead of us. I think I'll call this guy Roger. No, not again. Transporting camels was always so hard because they sit down so much. They're literally the laziest mob I've ever seen. Let's just test it out quickly. All right, come this way. Don't sit down. Don't you dare sit down. Oh my god! So now we can finally feed these guys some cactus and hopefully create a baby camel. Oh my god, this guy is so cute. <laughs> but if we're gonna do that like a thousand times, we're gonna need about 2,000 cactus. And I'm not even sure there's that much in the entire desert. Hmm, what are we gonna do? This calls for a massive cactus farm. This cactus farm needed so many materials that I didn't have, so I had to spend hours collecting all of the resources. And now it's building time. Let's make this interesting. If I don't finish building the farm in 20 minutes, then I have to give a random person in my Discord server a shout out. Okay, so three, two, one, go. All right, uh, first thing we need to do is get glass and make a perimeter. One, two, three, four. From here, we need to add a bunch of sand. Oh my God, I forgot about this part. Then we need to do a pattern like this. Oh my God, what? No, I keep messing up. Oh my God, what is that? There's a ravine under the build. No. Oh my God. No, this is really gonna cost us a lot of time. Wait, why don't we just build it on the grass instead of putting dirt under it? Oh no, this is gonna cost us so much time. One, two, three, four. And then we need to do the sand pattern again. Nice, we're making good progress. All right, nice. Now we dig up these. Come on. And now we need to make the collection system under the farm. Come on. I'm going to place some blocks here. Connect these holes up. Oh no, we've only got like two minutes left. Oh, we have to go sleep. Come on. And we just had water there. There. Oh no, the time's going to run out. And there's no way we're going to be able to finish this farm. <laughs> 
we have failed. All right, so shout out to Percival and Jaber. Now let's finish this farm. And just like that, we have a thousand cactus per hour cactus farm. I also had to fly home and get ourselves a fortune three pickaxe. So in a minute, we can build our giant camel enclosure. But first, we need to bring the camels here. Now, this is going to be hard because we still don't have a saddle. And this is no longer the camel hole. If I grab some cactus. Come on, camels. Hello there. Time to go to your new home. Let's go. Oh my God, these guys take up so much space and there's only three of them. I wonder if a thousand of them will crash my PC. No, don't sit down. Well, I think we're leaving a camel behind. Okay, and now that we've got two camels here, we can start to breed them again. One cactus for you and one for you. And we now have four camels. So whilst we're waiting for these guys to be able to breed again, let's build them an awesome enclosure. Perfect. Wait, how did he escape? Um, wait, what? Camels can walk on walls. I guess we have to make them too high. Come into the enclosure. Oh my God, even the baby ones can go over it. Let's make sure they're nice and secure. And there we go. The camels are nice and secure. But because these walls have to be too high, it requires double the amount of sandstone. So I think we'll just upgrade the enclosure as we get more and more camels. So for a little while, everything was going well. The cactus farm was producing a lot of cactus and I was making good progress with breeding up the camels. But that's when I realized getting to 1000 camels wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. You see, each camel has a five minute cooldown before it can breed again. That doesn't sound too bad, right? But you also have to consider each camel takes 20 minutes to grow up so that it can be bred with other camels. And consequently, it took us 40 minutes to get eight camels. Meaning continuing at this rate, 1000 camels would take us over three entire days to get. So I guess the only thing we can do is work as fast as we can. However, I soon realized that the more camels we have, the more camels we can get in each breeding cycle, meaning it's going to take a lot less time than I thought. All right, so we now have 72 camels, but I don't think this enclosure is going to fit anymore. So the plan is to upgrade this tiny enclosure into a camel's paradise. It will be filled with everything a camel could ever want, and it's going to be massive, so it will have plenty of room for our 1,000 camels. And we are done with the first layer. Now, let's do the second. This one's going to take even longer, but it's going to make it look so much cooler. And there we go. The camel protection wall is complete and it's absolutely massive. Be free camels, be free. Go explore your new enclosure. There's so much room for activities. Hopefully the wall is fully camel proof, but let's just see. Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, so I'm controlling the camel and I can get up this bit, but I don't think regular camels are smart enough to do that on their own. Um, maybe I was wrong. No, no, come back. Camel, no, we're losing camels. We can't have this. We need to fix it. It only happens when the fences are on the corners. So if we just replace them, that should fix it. And now the wall is 100% camel proof. So before we move on to step two of our camel paradise plan, let's get closer to 1000 camels. Oh, wow. wow. This cactus farm is so good. Okay, this baby camel is my 120th camel, but that means we're still only 12% of the way to 1,000 camels. So we'll have to come back to breeding them later, but for now, it's time to move on to step two of our camel paradise plan. I want to build pyramids like the ones in Egypt, so my camel paradise really feels like the desert. And thankfully, we have a bunch of sandstone left over from building the walls. To make this more interesting, here are some facts about camels that you probably didn't know. Camels are three blocks tall, so when you ride them, smaller mobs like zombies and husks can't reach you. It's actually pretty OP. Camels can also swim in three deep water without kicking you off. This will be very important later. Finally, camels have cool floppy ears when you ride them with a saddle. Yeah, this is definitely the best one. And that is the pyramid complete. But before we make it look really cool, I've spotted these camels escaping our area. So quickly, we need to improve our walls. 
All right, now the wall is 100% camel proof. We just have to somehow bring all these camels back. In total, there was 34 camels that escaped and I managed to return every single one of them safely back to our camel paradise. Now I can finally decorate the pyramid. And now wow. with this done, it's nearly time to move on to step three of the plan. But first, I think it's time we got closer to that 1,000 camel goal. Okay, that's about 400 camels. Now let's move on to step three of the camel paradise plan, which of course is to build a camel oasis for all the camels to refill their hum. So for this, we're gonna need two buckets of water. And now we need a big hole in the ground. So with a bit of magic, subscribe to Lockdown Life. Wow, that was pretty easy. Now we need some dirt. And we're just gonna put a layer of this one away from the top. Excuse me, Mr. Camel. Can you get out of the hole, please? I built a massive cactus and a camel statue. And finally, I'm gonna add an island in the middle for the most elite camels. And of course, this is only three deep, so a camel can walk in it without kicking me off. And whilst we're waiting for some camels to join the island, let's get closer to 1,000 camels, because we're still only 40% of the way there. So after tens of hours of planning, building, and breeding, the camel paradise is now fully complete and occupied by over 1,000 camels. And I'm still getting over 40 FPS because my new PC is a beast. I think my favorite part of this video was the camel facts and also when the camels had a great escape and managed to escape past the wall. As you can see, 1,000 camels didn't really lag my PC, but 1,000 sniffers definitely did. Oh my god, yeah, it's definitely a lot laggier around here. So sniffers are in Minecraft now and I want lots of them, but I have none. Hmm, how are we gonna fix this? I've got a plan. We're gonna find a sniffer egg, hatch it, and duplicate it until we get 1,000 sniffers. Then we're gonna create a sniffer sanctuary big enough for all of them to enjoy. But to get our first sniffer, we need this brush. Nice, and now we need to find a warm ocean biome. Come on. Yes, we're here. Okay, now we need to look for suspicious sun. Uh, excuse me. And it looks like this. Now we just use our brush on it, and we got wheat. Oh my god, we have our very first sniffer egg. Okay, now let's do that for the rest of this area. Emeralds, pottery shard. Oh my God, let's go, a second one. So now I'm gonna place these eggs here and now we wait an uncertain amount of time for these eggs to hatch. Let's go, our first sniffer out of the 1,000 sniffers we're gonna have. <laughs> it's sniffing already. Let's go, our second sniffer. Wait a second, but how do we breed these guys? They've definitely got to grow up first. Oh my God, they're massive. But now how do we breed them? But that's when I discovered the only way to breed sniffers is by using torch flowers. And the only way to get them is from sniffers digging them up. So it looks like we need to use these guys to build an awesome sniffer farm. But first let's upgrade this enclosure. Now we can say goodbye to the pink sheep and yes. Oh yeah, this is the pink sheep that I used in the rarest items video. That's one sniffer and that's both sniffers in the enclosure. It doesn't look like much right now, but remember this is only version one and the final version of this enclosure is gonna be insane and have everything a sniffer could ever want. But now it's time to build the torch flower seed farm and for it, we're gonna need a lot of resources. And thankfully we have everything we need in here. All right, we've got everything we need to build this farm. And I think here is a pretty good place to build it. So let's flatten the area. Now let's build the area where the farming sniffers will actually stand. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, and before we fill it in, let's build the collection system underneath that will actually collect all the torch flowers. Okay, let's test if this works. Oh wait, we should probably power the rails first. How do we do that? I guess we have to go underneath. Yes. Okay, now if we turn this into a hopper minecart and put it on the tracks, we have a fully working collection system. Wait a second, the sniffers dug up more torch seeds. Now we have two, we can breed them. Let's go. <laughs> this is so cool. And we have our third sniffer egg. Ooh, this might be useful for the farm. So let's quickly finish this bit up. 
and add some glass walls around it, now we have a fully functioning sniffer farm. All we're missing is the sniffer. Oh, these sniffer eggs take ages to hatch. In fact, they take even longer than I thought. Each sniffer egg takes 20 minutes to hatch, meaning if we hatched one egg at a time, it would take over two weeks to get 1,000 sniffers. And I literally don't have that long because next week I'm meant to be recording another video. So yeah, we're in trouble. I do remember hearing something about moss and that it helps the eggs hatch faster. I guess that's our only option. Hopefully this actually works and I'm not just making this up. All right, let's see if this helps. Let's go, our third sniffer. So it turns out moss actually makes sniffer eggs hatch two times faster. And that factor, along with us hatching multiple eggs at the same time, should make getting 1,000 sniffers in our time frame possible, but it's still gonna be really hard. Let's say goodbye to this stinky first enclosure. And now that it's gone, let's work on step one of our insane sniffer sanctuary, which is gonna be building a sniffer protection wall around this entire area. And the sniffer protection wall is complete. We also now have five sniffers and one egg hatching, but we've still got a long way to go to fill up this massive area with sniffers. And that's two more sniffers. Wow, this is taking a long time. So I think I'll just AFK and let the torch flowers build up. All right, that's a lot of seeds. Give me lots of eggs. All right, there's four eggs, but we've still got 30 seeds. So let's see how many we can get. And we now have 44 fully grown sniffers. So the farm is now full. But before we start populating this area with sniffers, we need to build a place to hatch sniffer eggs. And luckily, that is exactly what step two is in our sniffer sanctuary plan. Ow. I built the perfect hatching sanctuary for these sniffer eggs. And of course, they had to have music. Whilst waiting for the eggs to hatch, I worked on making this enclosure a sniffer paradise. I built a sniffer playground that even had a water slide and a trampoline. All right, come on, sniffers. Let's try out the playground. What do you want to try out first? Uh, maybe the trampoline? I don't think they're very good at the trampoline. These sniffers might not have liked the playground, but I was determined to breed more. And hopefully one of them will like it. I also built this museum that displayed a sniffer pot, which was extremely hard to get. So with step five of the plan complete, that means we've We've only got one step left before we get to 1,000 sniffers. And that is building a giant sniffer statue to watch over all of the sniffers. Oh, and by the way, this statue is gonna be one pixel per block. So it's gonna be absolutely massive, meaning we're gonna breed up the sniffers at the same time. Hopefully this doesn't crash my PC. Here we go. And so, after hours and hours of breeding, hatching, and building, the sniffer enclosure is complete with over 1,000 sniffers. We have a fully working sniffer farm, an amazing hatching area, a playground for the sniffers to enjoy, as well as the almighty sniffer pot, and finally, the giant sniffer statue. One thing I was thinking when I was recording this video is that I wish sniffers were just a little bit more useful. They don't really do anything apart from give you these seeds. From 1,000 sniffers to traveling 200 million blocks. This video was the third traveling video I've done in the series. So at this point, I think I knew what I was doing, but traveling to every corner of the world wasn't gonna be easy. 200 million blocks. That's the same distance as flying around the earth five times. Wow. Or the distance I'm gonna have to travel to see every corner of the world border. How am I gonna do it? Well, that all starts with this horse. And that's where this comes in. The horse speed measuring machine 5000. Have I ever tested myself in this thing? I'm not sure. Oh, I got seven. Let me show you how it works. This will be horse number one. Come on. Yes. So now we just run in a straight line along here and it will tell us the horse's exact speed. Nine blocks per second, which is actually quite bad. So now the search is on for the faster horses. So let's try horse number two. Yes. Uh oh, this guy doesn't feel very fast. All right. What's he going to get? Oh my God. Seven blocks per second. Ooh, horse number five already feels quite fast, but let's see just how fast he is. 10 blocks per second, you can stay in the pen. But we're gonna need a lot faster than 10 blocks per second because I made a bet with my brother gamers. So wait a second, you think it's impossible for me to see all four corners in seven days? Uh, yeah, obviously. 
So if he wins the bet, he gets to upload a video on my second channel shouting him out. But if I win the bet, he has to admit in this video that I'm the better Minecraft player. I really want to win this bet, but seven days to see every corner is going to be very hard. Horse number nine. Ooh, yes. Oh my god, 12 blocks per second. That is very good. If we can get another one of these, we can breed two of them together and hopefully maybe get a 13 block per second horse. All right, this guy is horse number 25, I think. And I have a pretty good feeling about this one. Look how fast he is. He's just moving around all over the place, but it's kind of hard to tame. Come on. Yes. Oh my god. This guy feels fast. Here we go. Oh, let's go. A 13 block per second horse. That means if we can get another one of these, we might even be able to get a 14 block per second horse. So as the hours tick down on our bet, that's what I did for the rest of the evening until this happened. All four of these horses scored 13 blocks per second. They are literally the fastest horses I have ever seen. After hours of breeding the 13 block per second horses, this finally happened. Oh my god! Yes! 14 blocks per second! How is that even possible? <laughs> Let's go! This guy is insane. Wait a second, if 14 was possible, does that mean over 14 is? Because literally one block per second faster could save us tens of hours. Alright, so if we use this guy and breed him with a 13 block per second horse, maybe we can get another 14? Could this be the one? Oh my god, really? Did that actually just happen? Did it actually happen? Oh my god, let's go! We have an over 14 block per second horse. That is absolutely insane. But before we use this horse to get to our first corner of the map, I think we should make banners to place in each corner to show that I've explored the entire world. Nice. All right, now the fastest way to travel is going to be on the nether roof. So let's build ourselves a nether portal. And the reason we're going to travel on the nether roof is this horse is about 15 blocks per second in the overworld, which means in the nether, it travels at 120 blocks per second because one block in the overworld equals eight blocks in the nether. All right, let's go. We've got no time to waste because we've only got about 160 hours left of our bet. All right, so it's been two hours. Let's see just how far in the overworld we got. And we're Reluctantly, that's when I realized that it would literally take over 600 hours using the horse method to get to every single corner of the world border. So I had no other choice to turn back. And on the way back, I realized we didn't even have a return method. So it would take literally over 1000 hours to do it this way. My new method was to use elytras, but traveling 200 million blocks would use way too many rockets. So my solution, to slow down time. I built a machine that would literally slow down the game so each rocket will last way longer. This is the Boat Spammer 3000. I'll explain how it works later, but all you need to know is this is the reason traveling 200 million blocks might actually be possible. But to make it work, we've got a lot to do. First, I filled up the machine with loads of boats. All right, so that is all the boats. But before we turn this thing on and get traveling our 200 million blocks, it's time for step two, which is gathering the rockets and elytras we'll need. And just like in the last traveling video, I got my hands on loads of elytras. And for the next step, I built a chunk loader to keep my machine running when I was away. Oh my god, it's loading the chunk. Perfect. Okay, it's time to turn on the machines. Our world is about to get very laggy. Okay, so it's spamming all the boats, which is going to slow down our game ticks. Okay, let me just demonstrate how this works. So you see we're at Y level 81, and usually one of these rockets would take us up 80 blocks. So we'd get to about 160. But if I do it now that it's getting a bit laggier, you can see that it takes us much higher than 160 and it's literally only gonna get more and more powerful and after one rocket we're at 650 time is moving so slow right now yeah even the sun's moving slower look at that it just lags back into place oh no it literally takes ages to eat food time is so slow it was then time to go onto the nether roof and start my journey 10,000 blocks Let's go. Oh, and it might be at this point that you're wondering, how am I actually going to get back? Well, I did build this enderpearl stasis chamber before I left, but the way I'm going to activate it is going to be really cool. But you'll have to wait until we get to the first corner to find out what it is. 
Let's go, one million diagonal blocks. All right, it's now literally the next day and we're coming up on 2,750,000 diagonal blocks away. But we are just about to run out of height. Wait, where's the bedrock? Um, oh. Nice. If my calculations are correct, this should bring us out straight on the first corner. Oh my god, it's so, so lucky. Please work. Please don't crash my PC, please. Learning terrain. Oh my god, that is the corner of my world. I am literally standing in the very corner block of my world. And now for our very first banner. We've done it. One out of the four corners. We've still got a lot of blocks to travel. But now comes the question, how am I going to get back? Well, like I said earlier, it's got something to do with that stasis chamber I built back at spawn. And you see, I'm in quite a unique situation because I live with my brother, who's also a Minecraft YouTuber. And if I just press escape and click this open to land button and start land world, it turns my single player world into a private local server. And the perk of that is my brother gamers will be able to join. I'm pretty sure I'm the first person to do this kind of thing where someone's joined another person's hardcore world and activated something. But it's actually so much easier than building a machine like I did in the 120 million block video. Are you ready? Yes. I think. Okay, join my hardcore world. Okay. I'm joining. Alright, so you should be at spawn, right? Yes, I'm next to a portal. Okay, you see that big machine? It should have some boats in it. It's yeah. Like machine. Behind it, there should be a trap door. Oh, yeah. End of pill. Okay, yeah, I see this. Whenever you're ready, do a countdown and click it, and I should be teleported all the way across from the corner of the map back to spawn. Okay. I really hope this works. Um, Is this a lot of pressure? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm ready. Okay. When you are. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh my god, I'm back! Alright, but now we've still got no time to waste because we still have that bet with gamers. I repeated the entire flying process, but this time towards a different corner of the map. Alright, it's portal time. And hopefully this should be corner number two. It is a Mesa biome. We must find the corner. Yes, the corner of the world. Oh my god. Speaking of which, it's time to place our banner. Oh yeah. Gamers, take it away. Let's go. You guys know the drill by now. This should be high enough. This time we're going to negative X and negative Z. So... We need to get this lined up with 135. There we go. So I'll see you guys in about 30 hours when we reach the corner. All right, here we are, the third corner. What's it going to look like? Ooh, a lush cave biome. Oh, and the corner is right here. Yeah, we should probably put it on the surface, though. Oh, my God, this is going to take ages to mine up. I remember coming out of the cave at this part of the video and being so annoyed. Getting to the surface was not fun. Here we go. Yes, the surface. Wait, the corner is literally an ocean biome. Wait, can you place stuff on the world border? No, I guess we can just put some obsidian here and then our banner. There we go. We have officially been to the third corner, which means there's only one corner left to do. Whenever you're ready, gamers. Hello there. So as of right now, we only have about 10 hours left of our bet. So I'm not sure how this is going to be possible, but let's give it a go. Now we are heading to the very last corner. Yeah, so during my 30 hour plus flight, I came to the realization that we had 100% lost our bet with gamers. But in doing so, we have nearly explored my entire Minecraft world by traveling over 300 million blocks. That is absolutely insane. And just as I was about to light the final portal, it was clear I couldn't have done any of this without my brother gamers. So gamers, congrats on winning the bet and you can now post whatever you want on my second channel. But now let's finally complete this challenge all right here we are and let's go we've literally explored my entire world and seen every corner of the world border <laughs> that is insane all right gamers you can teleport me back now gamers
No! But to this day, Gamer still hasn't posted anything on my second channel. And he's had five months to do it. But to be fair, he is working on a massive video. And speaking of massive videos, they don't get much bigger than this. This is an ocean monument, and this is my upgraded ocean monument. Wow. I think it looks a lot cooler. So that got me thinking, why don't we upgrade every structure in Minecraft? Some of these builds are going to look insanely cool. So let's get started by upgrading the Bastion Remnant. So for this, we're going to need to collect all these blocks. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, let's try and be a little bit safer. Okay, and now that we've got all the materials, we need to find a good place to build it. Wow, this place is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I definitely didn't just build this. But anyways, my idea for this transformation is to turn a regular bastion into more of a nether castle. So let's get to work. And whilst I'm building, let me tell you why I'm actually doing this. You see, my brother has always thought he's a better builder than me. I mean, he literally built this clock tower from scratch in survival. And he's oh called God, a lot of my terrible. builds back. So to prove to him that I'm actually a good builder, I'm I'm going to show him all the finished upgraded structures so they really need to look good oh why does it look so bad hmm why don't we start with the easier structures and work our way up to the harder structures hopefully this way we can improve our confidence and maybe even increase our skills as a builder so first up let's transform the ruined nether portal Oh. My first idea with this is to make it bigger because everyone knows bigger is always better. So we'll grab some obsidian and the biggest the portal can actually be is 23 by 23. So I guess we'll build that. Perfect. That is going to be one big portal. Why is it squ- Now let's add some crying obsidian. All right. And now let's break some more obsidian for the gaps. Oh, how I love breaking obsidian. Now to upgrade the decorations. I love how the nether sort of leaks into the overworld, but I don't like how it's only this basic nether biome. So I'm going to change this one biome into all the nether biomes. And to do this, we need to collect them. Okay, and now we just place the biomes around the structure. And it's really important we make it blend into the surroundings. And then we decorate the biome. That's the crimson biome. On the other side, we'll have the warped forest biome. Next up is the soul sand valley with a very miniature fossil. Then the battle delta biome. Add a little bit of lava. And finally, the nether wastelands biome. Add some more decoration. And so that's all the biomes added. So now we've only got a few things left to do. I changed the stone bricks into blackstone bricks because they look a lot cooler. And I replaced the gold blocks with netherite blocks just to flex. And finally, I doubled the chest and added something inside to make it a little bit more rare. And so that is the ruined portal upgraded. So with the ocean monument included, we've now upgraded two out of the 26 Minecraft structures. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a long way to go if I still want to prove that I'm a good builder to my brother. So let's head to the desert to upgrade our next structure, the Desert Pyramid. So for this one, I'm going to try and be a bit more creative. And step number one is changing all this sandstone into blackstone. You might not be able to tell yet, but I'm actually transforming this desert temple into a nuclear desert temple. It's looking really cool already, but step two is changing all this orange stuff into lime green concrete. So we're going to need some lime green dye. Then we combine these dyes and we'll use this to make some lime concrete powder, which we can duplicate using this machine. And now we'll use this machine to turn it into concrete. Nice. I definitely didn't nearly die to a creeper. Oh my god, no! Anyways, for the next step, I'm going to use some yellow and black concrete to make this look a bit more nuclear. Okay, I think it's very clear this is a nuclear desert pyramid. But to upgrade it even more, let's add some blocks there. We can add a beacon here and some lime green glass. That looks even better. Now I want to add some cracks in the ground. Hopefully this is going to look really cool. Little did I know at this point that this video was going to take over two weeks to record. Just for reference, a normal video takes me about a week. So that's another structure upgraded. Now it's time to move on to the slightly harder structures. And for that, it's time to head to the end dimension. And I think you'll be able to guess what it is. It's an NC. I'm looking right at an NC. And I've got a really cool idea for it. But for it to work, we need to find two N cities that are close together. Ooh. Yes. Oh, they'll definitely do. Now, first things first, we can kill all the shulkers in this city. 
Ow, they kind of hurt. This build took so long that I regretted starting it, but at the end of it, I think it looked really cool. This is my upgraded end city. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better than that. I then upgraded a zombie spawner, a shipwreck, and a mineshaft, as well as a few others. So for the village upgrade, there is a bit of a story. I've traded with villagers in this world thousands of times. And that got me thinking, villagers must be extremely rich, but their houses really don't show it. So we're gonna change that and reveal just how rich the villagers actually are. Anyways, for this, we're gonna need a hell of a lot of emeralds. Luckily for us, we have the most OP emerald farm in the game. Wow. This build was so expensive that I was only able to do it because of this farm. One of the best raid farms possible that gives an insane amount of emeralds. And this really AP gold farm that I made when I did the 1 million gold award. And now that we've got all our materials, the first thing I'm going to do is replace all the grass with emerald blocks. This is going to be so expensive. Yeah, that took a lot longer than I thought. Yay! Now, believe it or not, fossils actually count as Minecraft structures. So, I'm gonna have to upgrade them. And for this, I'm gonna build a massive human rib cage. And I should be pretty good at this because I actually did human biology at university until I dropped out to play the block game. All right, somehow I have made it look half decent and I'm pretty happy with it because that took me a while. Although I did do biology at university, this was still really hard to build at this scale and I'm pretty sure I had to rebuild it like five different times. And this next upgrade has brought me to the stronghold. At least I hope it has. Okay, here's the stronghold. Yes, the portal room. These things are actually like mazes. So why don't we build an actual maze with the end portal in the center? And to make it easier, I'm going to build it up in the air so that when you get to the center you can easily drop down to the portal all right now it's time to build the actual maze this will be the entrance and now we'll start building the layers of walls and we'll just try and make this maze as hard as possible I'm pretty sure this build started the idea for my maze video. So that is the stronghold upgraded. After this, I upgraded the woodland mansion, an ancient city, an abandoned village, and finally the bastion. Whilst I was completing this final upgrade, my mind was occupied by three questions. Will gamers actually like this build? Will he appreciate the insane amount of time it took to upgrade every structure in the game? Will he admit I'm actually a decent builder? Well, with the bastion fully upgraded it was time to find out hello gamers hello so you know how we used to do 100 days videos together in them you'd always build the base because well i was a bad builder yes <laughs> i just spent the last two weeks upgrading every minecraft structure and i want you to judge them you ready yeah let's have a look oh my god that looks sick whoa Okay, I admit it, you've definitely gotten better at building. Let's go! So, Gamers thinks I'm a decent builder. Well, I think this video might have let him down. Because this is the video I regret most from this year. I feel like I could have made some of these planets look a lot cooler. And maybe even made each of them a bit bigger. Overall, I just feel like this video was a bit rushed. And I could have had a better storyline. I feel like I could have made some of the planets look a lot cooler. Because in my opinion, the build doesn't really look that cool. 63 biomes are in Minecraft, and for every single one, I'm gonna build a planet. And by the end of the video, we'll have a galaxy of planets with every biome. And trust me, it's gonna look so cool. But to get to that, we need to start on our first planet, the Ice Spikes planet. This planet's gonna look really cool, and for it, we need packed ice, regular ice, and a bunch of snow. Now, to get to the point where we actually want to build the planet, we're going to need a bunch of dirt. Nice. Okay, and now the plan is to get into the end and build away from the solar system. So we have a nice big area to build our galaxy. Okay, so we'll start at Uranus and we'll just build out from here. All right, this looks like a good place. So let's put down some water. That is kind of scary. <laughs> now we want to go one, two, three, four, five down. And this is where we're going to start building the planet. All right, for the actual planet itself, we're going to use a mixture of snow and regular ice. 
All right, I know what you're thinking. This looks nothing like the ice spikes biome. I mean, we've got the ice, but we're missing the spike. Don't mind me just building a massive spike for a planet. And that's the ice spike planet complete. I then made a planet for the plains biome, desert biome, meadow biome, and my own custom biome. This planet is going to be called the capitalist planet. It's entirely centered around money, so that means this planet is going to be quite expensive to build. We're going to need a bunch of this, some of this, and a whole bunch of this. All right, let's do this. We now need to make some luxurious trees. These are some expensive leaves. Right, I really hope this looks like a tree. I'd say that's a pretty good tree. For the next couple of hours, I grinded, building biome after biome and drinking coffee after coffee to keep me awake until finally the galaxy was complete. Thank you so much for watching. Watch this video next. However, this video was right at the start of the year, and thankfully, my videos have improved a lot since then. And a prime example of that is my most recent video. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. This is Minecraft's most impossible maze, and if my friends reach the inside of it, they win $1,000. However, all of this is going to happen in seven days, and as of right now, we haven't even built the maze. So, first things first, let's lay down the outline of the maze. Oh my god, this is absolutely massive. This right here is gonna be the entrance. And now in the rest of this space, we can add so many tricks, dead ends, and traps to make this the most impossible maze in all of Minecraft. So first up, right as they go in, I want them to have as many choices as possible. And hopefully they make the wrong one. So they can go left, they can go right, and we'll even make it so they can go straight forward. I'm literally gonna make this maze so impossible. One of my favorite traps in the maze was the most brutal one, a TNT minecart trap. Just look at how effective it is. Yep, it works. I covered this area in pressure plates and I was really looking forward to catching someone out with this. And this is only the first of 16 traps that are designed to make this maze basically impossible and save me $1,000. I really like how the video progresses nicely and you can see how there's a lot more cool stuff to come. I littered the maze with some of the coolest traps I could think of, including a nether portal that leads to a maze in the nether. Some of my other traps included trip wires, parkour, and powder snow no traps. I even built this huge tree to force my friends into making the wrong choices when navigating through the maze. As you can see, the maze is still very incomplete. And in about 10 hours, one of my YouTube friends is going to come and test the maze. So it's time to complete this maze. Oh, this is taking so long. And so with the maze complete, it was time to see how it would fare without the hardest traps added. All right. Hello, Chazza. Hello, lockdown. I also really like including other people like Chazza, gamers and Gilf in my videos because it just makes it a lot more fun. You'll have 10 minutes to complete this massive maze. And the rules are that you can't use third person. And also you have to set your spawn to this bed, which you've just done, I think. Done. And because we're now in survival, if you die, you'll respawn at the bed. So try not to die to any of the traps. Traps? 10 minutes starts now. Let's go! How big is this, like, block-wise? It's like 500 uh, by 500? I'm pretty sure it's like... I think it's 100 by 100. Or it's like 150 by 150. Ah. <laughs> nah, I'm not taking slowness. Oh! I think my strategy is just to get to the... Uh, the tree, I think, is over there. You're going the wrong way, then. <laughs> oh, we've got some snow. What is quartz? Snow. That's snow problem. <laughs> Wait, what? Why did I leave a hole there? <laughs> is that part of it? Or? Yeah, it is. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. There's no way he's making it. Oh, no. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I could just run to another portal and I'd be through. Damn. Nah, that's amazing, the nether. <laughs> Why am I back at the beginning? <laughs> it was funny when Chazza was actually doing the maze because it showed up until 10 minutes and then it actually took him 17 more minutes to get from here to the actual center. 
and I'm pretty sure he died in here about eight times. Also a fun fact, for the thumbnail, I had to make each one of these walls two taller, and I also changed the center from diamonds to a sort of finish flag. But then finally, the maze was ready. All right, guys, so you'll have 30 minutes to get to the diamonds in the center of the maze. Whoever gets the first wins the $1,000. This is going to be me, then. Three, two, one, go. Okay, ah! I'm off. 30 minutes starts oh. now. I am muting. Oh, he's found a nether portal. He's going through it. Oh, there's bits in the nether. He has found some snow. No, I'm Ooh, stuck. Okay. How do I get out? Yes, die. Ooh. All right, where is Gilf? Oh, Gilf chose the right one this time. Oh my God, he's just skipped so much of the maze. Oh no. What is it? What? Oh no. You can do it. Oh, he's making it. Nice. No. This mine trap was definitely one of my favorite traps, along with the button trap, because it was so funny when gamers realized what happened. Time is running out, but he's gonna test them all. He's testing them. He found one. Oh. He's gone through and he's okay. gone backwards in the maze. Ah. Gilf was literally ahead of gamers for most of the maze, but at the end, somehow gamers figured out the right way to go. Yes! He was just won the yes! $500. <laughs> oh no, and Gilf yeah. was watching it through the window. So that was the best of my hardcore world in 2023. Thank you guys so much for an amazing year and let's make 2024 even better.